All right, good evening. Um, opening our virtual meeting at five o'clock. Call the meeting to order. The NVUSD Board of Education is holding a regular virtual board meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Specific directions on how to participate, to participate are located on the Board of Education webpage on the district's website, nvusd.org slash board. The open session part of the meeting agenda begins at 7 p.m. We'll now go to public comment on closed session items. Before going into closed session, the board is available for public comment on closed session agenda items. Is there any public comment on closed session items? Mr. Bassanet. There is no public comment uh, at this time, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you. Um, seeing that there are none, the Napa Valley Unified School District will now adjourn into closed session. We adjourn to closed session, see you all at seven. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Elva Gonzalez Mares, and this is the Napa Valley Unified School District Board of Education. The NBUSD Board of Education is holding a regular board meeting tonight that all can participate in remotely. You can join via Zoom. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Elva Gonzalez Mares, y esta es la mesa de educación del Distrito Escolar Unificado del Valle de Napa, NBUCD, por sus siglas en inglés. La mesa de educación de NBUSD está llevando a cabo una reunión regular esta noche en la que todos pueden participar de forma remota. Puede unirse a través de Zoom. Interpretación, inter, interpretation in Spanish is available for tonight's virtual meeting. To access interpretation from a computer, click on the interpretation icon on the bottom of your screen from within the Zoom application on a mobile device. Click on the more button on the bottom of your screen and choose language interpretation from within the Zoom application. This is a separate channel that will allow you to hear English to Spanish translation concurrently. Please note, interpretation services are not available when you join our meeting by calling in. Our interpreters for tonight's meetings are Julie Young and Isidra Mencos. May we have one of the interpreters please translate these directions on our English channel so our Spanish-speaking families can hear the instructions. Mr. Bassanet, can we have one of the translators um, come in into our channel to let our Spanish speaking families hear the instructions? Yes, Isidra should be able to. Okay, Ms. Mencos, go ahead. We still don't hear her. Claudia can go ahead and update us. She's available. Buenas noches. Los servicios de interpretación estarán disponibles para esta junta. Uh, si ustedes uh, se están uniendo a esta junta por medio uh, por medio del teléfono, pueden utilizar la aplicación Zoom. En la parte inferior de su pantalla, uh, en medio, uh, ustedes pueden hacer un clic en el símbolo de mundo para uh, escuchar la interpretación en español. Obvio, elegir el idioma en español. Uh, desgraciadamente, uh, eh, no se puede opinar si están uh, solamente escuchando telefónicamente esta junta. Uh, Perdón, sí se puede opinar, pero nada más. And I'm sorry, miss. Uh, it's star seven, right? To, to uh, star nine. nine. Star nine, thank you. Uh, si oprimen, por favor, eh, estrella y nueve, entonces uh, de esa manera se puede silenciar. Muchas gracias. Okay, muchas gracias. Specific instructions on how to participate in the meeting are located on the Board of Education webpage. Web on the district's website, nbusd.org slash board. Can we please start with an attendance roll call from Vera Morales, executive assistant? Yes, student board member Magaña is absent tonight. Trustee Gonzalez Mares? Present. Trustee Jankowitz? Present. Trustee Gracia? Present. Trustee Reiser? Present. Trustee Water? Present. 
Trustee Shu? Present. Trustee Dooley? Present. Quorum present. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Napa Valley Unified School District Board meeting. Public participation remains virtual, online only, due to the COVID-19 shelter-in-place order. We continue in uncharted territory as we deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. As trustees, we have returned to the boardroom in solidarity with our staff, given that our school campuses are now reopened for our students. However, in order to ensure access to our meetings without any limitations during the persisting pandemic, we are continuing with online remote access via Zoom for the public and guests. I would like to thank our employees, our families, and the entire NBUSD community for how you have supported each other and come together during these unprecedented times. This meeting tonight is in accordance with the open meeting rules in the state of California for the governor's order. I'm going to start tonight with some basic instructions on how we are going to be using Zoom and involve the members of the community. All board of trustees and the superintendent are on video throughout the entire board meeting from here in the board room. Other staff members are present by video. Members of the community will not be on video and will be muted except during public comment. During public comment, any member of the community that wishes to speak must raise their hand using the raised hand feature in Zoom. You will be unmuted and be provided three minutes to speak. There are two ways to make public comment within the time allotted for public comment on an eligible agenda item. To comment by video conference, click the raise your hand button to request to speak when the public comment is being taken on the eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, your name will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comments. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. Instructions on how to raise your hand are available on the district's website at nbusd.org slash board. To comment by phone, you will be prompted to raise your hand by pressing star nine to request to speak when public comment is being taken on the eligible agenda item. When it is your turn to speak, the last four digits of your phone number will be called out. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comment. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. You will, you will then be remuted. Instructions on how to raise your hand by phone are available on the district website at nbusd.org slash board. In addition, community members were allowed to submit comments via email at publiccomment.nbusd.org up until 8 a.m. this morning. Public comment received after 8 a.m. the day of the scheduled meeting will not be read into the record. However, the public comment will be announced as received after the deadline and, it'll be, and it will become part of the meeting archive as long as it's received before the meeting is officially called to order. For every agenda item, I will prompt the meeting participants who have joined us via Zoom for public comment. Please follow the instructions just provided when you would like to comment on an item. We have been called to order and conducted our attendance roll call. We will go forward with our agenda. I will ask Trustee Gracia to report on uh, closed session items. Yes, thank you. Uh, in closed session, the board took action to approve the following staff recommendations. The following administrative appointments have been made. D2A1, Ian Ainsworth, the position of principal for Napa High School, effective July 1, 2021. D2A2, Joe Bassinet to the position of Chief Technology Officer for the Napa Valley Unified School District, effective May 7th, 2021. And that is all. Thank you, Trustee Gracia. So uh, we wanna welcome uh, J uh, Mr. Joe Bassinet as our new Chief Technology Officer, and he's uh, gonna be live and in the role this evening as the voice uh, facilitating our, our meeting for remote public participation. So welcome aboard, Mr. Bassinet, your new role. We're very, very excited. Um, do you wanna say anything, Mr. Bassinet? Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Massetti and Board of Trustees. I'm very excited about the opportunity and looking forward to continuing uh, the success of this department. Thank you, Joe. We're really, really excited to have you. And then I'd also like to welcome Dr. Ainsworth. I think he is here tonight. Um, Mr. Bassinet, if you could potentially unmute him. Uh, we want to welcome him as our new Napa High School principal. Uh, Dr. Ainsworth, are you there? Yes, let me get him uh, 
to talk. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to be appointed in what I believe is the greatest high school in Northern California with one of the greatest <laughs> that, that you can find. Um, I, I'm truly grateful and, and just wanna say thank you. Uh, most importantly, I would like to thank my wife and my three boys for standing shoulder to shoulder with me through this new endeavor. So thank you. Okay, so welcome into your new role, Dr. Ainsworth. We're very excited about our appointments this evening. Indeed we are, welcome. Um, we are now going to item E2. I'm gonna um, have uh, Trustee Julie lead us on our flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Next item is an announcement that this meeting is recorded for live, live streaming and archiving on the district YouTube channel. For a detailed review of any meeting agenda item, the archive video can be referenced, located on the district's webpage at nbusd.org. The public can join the virtual board meeting remotely via Zoom. Participation instructions and the process for public comment can be found on the district's webpage. We now move forward with approval of agenda. Move to approve. Second. I have a first by Trustee Gracia, a second by Trustee Dooley. Um, we have new student board rep tonight, so I'm just gonna um, try to remember that and not have that in my mind. Um, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody abstain or oppose? Great, thank you. We now move on to approval of minutes. Approval minutes of April 15. So moved. First by Trustee Gracia, uh, second by Trustee Jankowicz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody oppose or abstain? Thank you. Approval of minutes of April 22nd, 2021. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Water. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, thank you. Recognition of visitors and employee organizations. Dr. Massetti, who's joining us tonight. Yeah, so um, I, we have all three of our union leaders here this evening. So I wanna welcome them. We'll start out with Mr. Hector Gallegos, the president of CSEA. Are you there, Mr. Gallegos? I thought I saw him here. Mr. Bassanet, didn't I see him? That is correct, Dr. Massetti. He is on mute. Good evening, everybody. Um, Hector Gallegos representing uh, CSEA. Thank you for being here this evening, Mr. Gallegos. Uh, Ms. Walder from NAPS. Good evening, um, President Maris Gonzalez and Dr. Musetti and members of the Board of Education. I'm Leslie Walder and I represent NAPS Association of People Services. Thank you for being here tonight, Ms. Walder. And uh, Ms. Gail Young, President of NVEA. Hello all, I'm Gail Young and I represent the teachers, nurses and counselors um, with Napa Valley Educators Association. It is uh, Teacher Appreciation Week and actually next uh, week is both um, the California Day of the Teacher and of the nurse, school nurses. So um, I think that we are very fortunate in this um, in this district to be able to have some wonderful teachers, wonderful nurses and wonderful counselors. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Young, for being here. And that reminder about appreciating employees next week. Thank you. All right, we are now moving um, forward with our recognition of students of the month. Um, tonight, we have Vintage High School and Napa Valley Independent Studies. So why don't we start with Vintage High School, Principal O'Connor? Hello. Hello, 
thank you for having me this evening. Um, just a quick caveat before I get started in case it sounds loud in the background or you're wondering about my background. I happen to be in the Napa High School PE office. Um, I'm also overseeing big game tonight. So uh, just in case it sounds a little bit loud in the back. All right. Good evening and thank you, Dr. Musetti, NVUSD Board of Education, district leaders and audience members attending this evening. It is with extraordinary pride that I present to you two outstanding Vintage High School Board Students of the Month. These are for the months of March and April. All right. Can we advance to the next slide? There we go. All right. Vintage's Board Student of the Month for March is Isabella Hutnick. Isabella's 4.0 GPA is the tip of the iceberg. Yes, Isabella is a stellar student who works hard and is adored by her teachers for her engagement in classes and described by her counselor as hardworking, passionate, strong, and responsible. But she is so much more than that. Isabella is the kind of well-rounded student in person that Vintage High School strives to nurture and develop. She is passionate and committed to violin, both in school and in the Napa Valley Symphony. She has also moved through all three levels of the Vintage Art Program. Isabella's academic dedication and artistic passion are further rounded out by her athletic involvement and in campus contributions. She has participated in volleyball, track, and tennis during her time at Vintage, and has also been involved in Teams for Change, the Thirst Project, and the Vintage Peer Support Program. When not busy with all these things, Isabella is traveling the world. Only 18 years old, she's already visited 17 countries. I'm so jealous. Resume and accomplishments and world travel aside, I can't help but share how much I enjoy Isabella's genuine presence and smile. She's a joy to be around in person, and it turns out even just great to see on Zoom. Next year, Isabella plans to attend the University of Hawaii to study psychology. Not a surprise she'll be traveling to college. I proudly present to you Isabella Hutnick. Hi, hi everyone. Um, good evening, Dr. Mazzetti, MVUSD Board of Education, Napa Valley ED Foundation and district leaders. Um, it's such an honor to be here this evening and I would just love to express my appreciation for this opportunity. Um, I've been a part of the Napa Valley School District since I was in kindergarten and it has undoubtedly helped me to shape into the person who I am today. Um, I would just like to start off by saying how truly thankful I am for the people in my life including my mom, my sister, my friends, and to all the people who have made my school experience as amazing as it was. Um, in fourth grade, a group of high schoolers came into my elementary school's cafeteria and they stood up on the stage just talking about the opportunities they had to travel when they were able to join their school's orchestra or band. Um, this curly haired girl who played the flute said that this upcoming summer, Napa High School's marching band would go to Disneyland while this tall boy who played the violin said that the, they were playing on a cruise ship um, to Honolulu, Hawaii. I turned to my friend Devin and we both agreed that going to Hawaii would be a lot more fun than just marching around Disneyland on a hot sunny day. Um, plus our teachers bribed us with the ability to leave class for an hour so we could go to our music lessons in the music room every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, initially, I didn't really take violin very seriously, but after nine years, it's definitely become one of my favorite ways to relieve stress or whatever's weighing me down. And I'm just really blessed that out of all the loud and reckless fourth graders, Mr. Tabor was the first person who saw the potential I had. Um, he pushed me to audition for the Napa Valley Youth Symphony, and I was blessed to have him as my orchestra teacher from fourth grade all the way up until seventh grade when he retired in 2016. Although I'm not really sure where he is, um, I'll forever hold a special place in my heart for the priceless gift of music that he gave to me. Um, moving forward, middle school was a really difficult time for me for multiple reasons. Um, my dad got sick by the end of sixth grade and we managed to go back and forth, doctor's appointments in San Francisco. And just a few months before my graduation, he passed away. Um, Forcing myself to stay motivated in school was definitely one of the biggest challenges, but amidst all the obstacles, my passion for science and biology just distracted me from the reality that was going on in my abnormal life. 
Mr. Albertazzi by far was one of the most amazing people that I've ever met. He didn't act like the other adults who just tiptoed around me like I was some fragile girl, but instead he just supported me and treated me like a normal person. My best friend Ava and I would spend our lunch periods eating in his classroom with him and just talking about real life situations and having deep conversations. And he was one of the, the first people who showed me the importance of truly connecting with people, especially when they're at their most fragile point. Students who kept their hood over their heads or sat in the back of the class were met with his charisma and engaging personality. And I'll always appreciate and remember the lessons he taught me beyond the textbook that I'll carry out in my days moving forward. After having the most unusual end to, um, to a school year, continuing senior year was anything but easy. Managing my time wisely while getting used to having online class and trying to virtually create these friendships with teachers and friends was definitely a challenge. But Mr. Thomas opened up our AP literature class in August with transparency. He assigned us with an essay based off the novel The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, telling us to express our day-to-day -day lives by writing about things that we carry physically and emotionally. I remember looking into my purse that day, counting the loose change wandering around in the lip gloss container that leaked and stuck all my receipts and crumbs into a disgusting ball. <laughs> but once I set it down, I turned up the classical music playing on the radio and began to write. In a moment of vulnerability, I expressed my hardships that I've gone through from middle school and the heartbreak of losing my dad, but not expecting, not expecting a response in return. But that night, I had my first one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of my teachers. Mr. Thomas is one of the most empathetic, kind, and passionate people I've ever met. And anyone who has been one of his students will tell you the exact same. He's worked with me to clean up my college application essay and has been one of those teachers that you'll just remember for a lifetime. But um, before I wrap up, I would just like to give a huge thank you to everyone who has been a part of my journey along the way. And that goes for teachers, the janitors, the amazing principals and admin staff, the students, librarians, and everyone in between. I'm so blessed to have this community in my 12 years of education. And truly, I wouldn't be the person that I am today without any of you. Thank you once again for this opportunity and for those who came to support me tonight. Thank you, Isabella. All right, our board student of the month for the month of April I guess it says February on there, but I thought it was April, is David Ochoa. I have to be honest with you. I have struggled to find the right word or combination of words to accurately describe David. David is the pinnacle of humility and kindness. He is reflective and sweet. His smile alone will warm your heart. When I asked him what he loved to do in his spare time, he replied he enjoys cooking and baking, especially baking chocolate cakes. This guy, but David is also a beast. David has literally conquered life as a high school student and fought and won a battle for his own life against cancer. David was the recipient of the Every Student Succeeding Award in fifth, eighth, and 11th grades due to his battle with cancer and general ability to overcome and face challenges. But his success is far beyond winning a battle. David truly lives as a crusher day in and day out. He is a four-year member of the AVID program, a four-year member of the Vintage Boys soccer team, and part of the Vintage High School AP Spanish Club, all while earning stellar grades across all the academic subjects. David's success in all areas, despite any circumstances, should, should serve as an inspiration to all of us. Next year, David plans to attend Napa Valley College and study psychology with the hopes of going into counseling. I cannot wait to see the impact David Ochoa has on our community and world. I present to you, David Ochoa. Hello, everybody. I'm David Ochoa. Good evening, Dr. Mosetti, NBUSD Board of Education, Napa Valley Ed Foundation, and district leaders. Thank you for allowing me to be part of the meeting tonight. I truly believe that a huge part of who I am today comes from being an NBUSD student from kindergarten to senior year. The teachers that I would like to talk to you about were some of the teachers that have really left an amazing impression on me. The first teacher that I'd like to thank is Lisbeth Kuros. I feel truly fortunate to have had Ms. Kiros as my avid teacher during the last four years. She has always done an amazing job creating an environment in which us students can feel very comfortable in. One of my favorite parts about being her student is the freedom to move around class and work with where and we felt best. Having this opportunity has allowed me to build friendships and has always given me the opportunity to have a great time. 
I will always appreciate how she supports me and my teammates during our soccer games, from asking us about our games in class to going to the games and supporting us. I will always be thankful for having Ms. Kirill as my teacher. Another teacher I'd like to thank is Dylan Harley. Mr. Harley was my English teacher during my sophomore and junior years. Having Mr. Harley as my teacher has been extremely helpful in search of becoming successful. In class, he would truly help me to understand the plots from books we were reading, as well as guiding me towards figuring out what was expected in an assignment. I will always be thankful for him caring not only for me, but also my family. He'd be curious to know how my older brother was doing and even told me that it was great to have us both as his students. Without a doubt, being his student has really been one of the best times that I have had during my time at Vintage High School. I'll always be grateful to have had him as my teacher and awesome role model in school. The last teacher I'd like to thank is Javier Covarrubias. Mr. Covarrubias was with my teacher for fifth grade for Spanish for Spanish speaker students my freshman year and one of my coaches for the Vintage soccer team. Being his student has always been an incredible experience. Apart from him doing an awesome job in presenting students with lessons, he found the time and opportunity to make class really enjoyable, not only for me, but all students. I have also appreciated how he has helped me grow as a soccer player. He has helped me understand the importance of one's character, not only on the field, but also outside the field. It has been a real gift to have had him as one of my teachers and as one of my coaches. Thank you for your time, and I really appreciate the opportunity of being able to share a part of my story with you today. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, okay. Don't forget to wish the Crushers good luck at the big game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we heard, uh, um, Mr. Punner was right. We heard the, I think, the buzzer and the whistles. Um, so good Thank luck. you all. <laughs> OK, uh, we are now. Um, so yes, congratulations to our Vintage High School Students of the Month. Uh, now I'd like to welcome our Napa Valley Independent Studies um, Drew Heron, the uh, supervisor and coordinator of the program, to join us. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Massetti and school board um, trustees for giving me this privilege to introduce these two fantastic students tonight for the Napa Valley Independent Studies Program. Our first student tonight is Aaron Rollins, who is a senior. Uh, Aaron will be graduating this year and heading off, then heading off to Biola University. His teachers describe him as mature, outstanding, and a very hard young, hardworking young man. Um, he has what seems to be like a lot of similarities with, with a lot of students in our program. Uh, has a brother who is also an alumni of our, of our independent study program. So Aaron uh, has been part of our school for four years now. And, uh, and you know his teachers really have dis discussed how they've really seen him uh, grow and uh, become a really nice young man. So it's my privilege to present to you, Aaron Rollins, our January student of the month. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron Rollins and I attend Napa Valley Independent Studies. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for this opportunity of bringing me here and allowing me the opportunity to do school. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank our superintendent, Dr. Mercedi and the school board trustees for this opportunity and honor. And lastly, I'd like to thank my teachers for this nomination. Uh, after being homeschooled until eighth grade, I joined independent studies. Uh, with no public school experience, I was very nervous and afraid. Thankfully, it was a very smooth transition for me because I was given a space to be independent while also getting a real world classroom experience. Personally, uh, I love the smaller classes and how it provided me a more one-on-one -on -one feel with the teachers. I love the ability to grow on my own and build a sense of time management, and that is something that will benefit me for the rest of my life. Uh, independent studies has given me enough free time to pursue some of the things I love to do, like sports and music. Uh, independent studies allowed me to be just that, independent. Uh, my plans after independent studies I plan on attending a uh, college at Biola University in La Mirada, California. I plan on majoring in Bible and theology uh, to pursue a career in ministry or something that provides me a space to help teenagers wow. and encourage them. Teenagers wow. are facing uh, more and more challenges every day, whether that's outside influence or personal problems. I'm wow. super excited for what God has in store for wow. my life. Uh, to close, there's a lot of people I have to thank, but I'll keep it short. Uh, I wanna thank my mom and dad 
for giving me the encouragement to do school with a positive attitude, to view school as a gift, and to be appreciative of everything I've been given. I want to thank my awesome teachers, uh, all of them, <laughs> Mr. Bimson, uh, Mrs. Lucero, Mrs. Farrell, Mrs. Quinlan, Mr. Richmond, all of them. I want to thank everyone else who has been a part of this journey, and thank you again for this opportunity, and I hope you all have a great night. All right, congratulations, Aaron. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, February student of the month is Isabella De La Cruz. Uh, Isabella is new to our to our program this year. She is a junior who will be graduating one year early this June. And uh, I got to say, what I'm most impressed about her is her adventurous spirit. Uh, she is in the process of applying to schools, to Lingua schools in Japan, and has been taking classes in Japanese at Napa Valley Junior College. So uh, I can't imagine thinking that way when I was a junior, when I, <laughs> back in the day, um, but uh, just really impressed with her adventurous spirit and and her willingness to take risks. So uh, it is my privilege to present to you our February Student of the Month, Isabella De La Cruz. Hi, my name is Isabella De La Cruz, and I'm currently a junior at NVIS. Um, before I begin, I would like to thank Dr. Musetti and the Board of Trustees for this honor and opportunity. At my previous school, my counselor had recommended that I look into NVIS, and after I felt it was a good fit for me, I began attending at the beginning of the semester in hopes of graduating a year early. Transferring here has helped tremendously with achieving that goal, as well as supporting me throughout this journey. <laughs> now you may be thinking, why does she want to graduate a year early? Well, in short, I want to study in Japan. My friend and I came across a language school in Japan that offers a university preparatory program, and we decided that we were 100% going to study abroad. I would like to major in education at the University of Tokyo and bring people together through language, and by that I mean I hope to learn many more different languages as well as be able to live in different countries in order to teach. Lastly, I would like to thank my teachers because without them, I wouldn't have been able to speak to you all tonight. My friend who helped me realize what I wanted to do in the future and my supportive family. Thank you. Congratulations, Isabella. Thank you. Indeed, congratulations to the Napa Valley Independent Study Students of the Month. Um, thank you all for being with us tonight. All right, we are now moving forward with our agenda. Um, the next item is public comments on non-agenda items. But before I open it up to public comment to those joining us remotely, I'm gonna ask Trustee Gracia if we have any public comment items that were submitted via email. Uh, so no public comments on non-agenda items were submitted by email before tonight's board meeting. Thank you, Trustee Gracia. Members of the audience may address the board on any school-related matter that is not on the agenda. The board will not take action on any issue raised during this section of the agenda in as much as board action is limited to posted agenda items. Speakers are requested to limit their comments to a maximum of three minutes. Mr. Bassinet, do we have any public comment? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. Seeing there are none, we are now gonna move forward with our reports. This is the Board of Education and Student Board Representative. Uh, we'll start with the board. Sure. So on 428, I attended the ELAC meeting at Silverado Middle School. On the 29th, uh, a regional meeting put on by CSBA. On May 4th, I attended the NCOE board meeting where I learned, much to my surprise, that NCOE applied for and was awarded a $400,000 grant in order to improve the food services classroom at Vintage High School 
which will apparently allow catering by Vintage once the improvements are completed. Uh, this week is Teacher and Staff Appreciation Week. This year, more than ever, I would like to express my appreciation for the teachers and staff of the district. This year, due to the pandemic, teachers and staff have had to face challenges that go beyond teaching our children how to read, write, and do arithmetic. I know it hasn't been easy. I've seen just how difficult of a year it has been. I want to say thank you to our teachers and staff for your dedication and hard work. Thank you for your flexibility and willingness to tackle new technology, new online programs, and new schedules. Thank you for all the time spent conver <clears throat> converting in-person lessons to a virtual learning environment. I appreciate everything that you have accomplished this year. Thank you, Trustee Gracia. Trustee Jankowicz. I met with NV NVEA. I adopted two seniors and I apologize to my fellow trustees. I had a conflict Tuesday evening and could not attend the CSBA meeting. I continue with community engagement. And while some of the conversations are difficult initially, by the end, there is a mutual respect and understanding of the issues at hand. And I wanna thank everyone who has reached out and sought understanding. I hope it has been product as productive for you as it has been for me. And I too wanna thank our teachers and staff. We salute you and we appreciate you. Thank you, Trustee Jenkins. Trustee Reiser. Um, I, on April 26th, I had the pleasure of meeting with Ms. Gail Young of the NVEA to discuss issues facing her membership and kind of get a general, um, have a general conversation about the challenges brought on by the pandemic and how they've been faced um, in collaboration with the district um, and how the, how she and her members have worked together with the district to find solutions and really, you know, get through this year um, in such great shape. Um, so that was really enjoyable. On April 29th, I also attended the CSBA regional meeting. Um, there was a guest speaker from the CSBA who kind of talked about the generational effects of the pandemic and kind of the issues facing all districts in California. Um, there was a lot of focus on the push to reopen um, and it really kind of indicated and what, what a great position NVUSD has been in all along, being able to be one of the first districts to reopen for hybrid in-person learning. Um, we are definitely farther down the track than a lot of school districts in the state. Um, I could go on about other things in that meeting, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Um, there were some legislative updates about things related to extending broadband for all, um, including one sponsored by Assemblywoman um, Aguilar Curry from, from the Napa Valley area of, um, in order to finance infrastructure for things like broadband in rural areas. Um, May 4th, I had the pleasure of visiting Canyon Oaks Elementary School. Many thanks to Principal Stephanie Vasquez. Um, I was able to visit most of the classrooms and see in-person teachers teaching on their Promethean board, their virtual students. Um, I saw in-person learning and even to my surprise, I didn't realize this extended to some elementary um, sites, but the, uh, the simultaneous uh, rooming and zooming at the elementary level there too was was very impressive. Um, I just really enjoy going out to the schools and uh, seeing seeing our customers in their natural habitats and re being reminded of why it is that we all work so hard on behalf of the school district. Um, and it is teacher appreciation week and I did want to just sit, say a few things about that. Um, you know, this year, teachers across the district, across the state, across the country, across the world have been facing uncertainty, potential risk, steep learning curves, drastically limited instruction time, wide scale technology integration under extreme pressure. Uh, the analogy of building the plane while flying it comes to mind. Uh, and that's what all of our teachers have been doing adapting to the feat of juggling in-person and virtual students at, at once. Teaching has always been incredibly demanding work, but these past 14 months have just been off the charts. Um, teachers and staff have been nothing short of heroic in showing up for our students in the way that you have uh, this year. 
And in particular, I wanted to acknowledge the teachers and staff at River and Harvest Middle Schools um, and the loss that we ha have asked them to integrate and recover from. I really understand how the team at your school site becomes like a family, um, especially for those teachers and staff who've been at the same site for more than a decade, and we have a lot of them at those two sites. Teaching is a strangely isolating profession. You're almost never alone, but you're never, almost never with your peers either. And there's something about being a team of adults together in a sea of kids, because you're always outnumbered, that really binds you together. You share laughter and tears. You share moments of silliness like crazy hair day and Halloween costumes. Um, you compare notes about students and worry together about students that you have, have in common and you celebrate the successes of your students. You mark life events together, weddings and baby showers and personal losses. And sometimes you celebrate things like an end of the week happy hour and invariably the conversation ends up back on the topic of students and teaching. Um, you learn together and you problem solve together and you share supplies and ideas and after school chocolate stashes for energy. Um, when I was teaching in Vallejo before my seniority kept me above the fray of pink slips. I received a couple of years in a row, I received reduction in force notices and once um, became a layoff that was then rescinded. Um, and I fought to get back to my school site, even though within that district, it was considered one of the toughest places to teach. Um, I just wanted to get back to my team. So I wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge the difficulty and the pain of losing the team that you love as you know it to be. Um, I just wanna say that I, I'm sorry for that loss. And I, I would just also like to ask the teachers and staff at our remaining middle school sites to keep that in mind, how discombobulating this transition period is for your colleagues who are going through that and who may be coming to join you from these two school sites the year after next. I'm really excited about the next phase of our middle school redesign. And I believe it's a, a, a real opportunity for us as a district to make ourselves better and to set ourselves up to serve our students more effectively. Um, so in these final weeks of this tumultuous year, a year like none of us could ever have imagined, I just want to express my gratitude for your fortitude and for your stamina and for your creativity and your good humor and your commitment to this incredibly important work. Please know, and I think I speak for everyone here from the bottom of my heart that I appreciate you. And that concludes my report. Tristy Water. Well, um, I decided to uh, spend some time catching up on all the CSBA bulletins of the last month. And then I tuned in yesterday to the um, CSBA webinar about um, you know, recovering after the pandemic, how we're going to move forward with um, academics. Uh, I was just looking at the um, at the Napa Arts Council Visual and Performing Arts Awards, and I'd like to uh, congratulate Ashley Araquin Corrales, fifth grader from Phillips, Idali Savala uh, Macero at Phillips, also a fifth grader, and Caden Lane Garcia at Willow, a fourth grader. And really, they are incredible artists, and so young. It was I'm very impressed. Um, I continue to uh, be doing some um, constituent work and, um, you know, uh, meeting people um, for coffee to discuss the schools, another date coming up next week. And uh, today I went to the Napa Valley College lunch and it was really interesting. Um, let's see, oh, I'm not gonna look it up. It's just, uh, I, took a, I took a screenshot because, they had an outline of everything they talked about. But what I was really interested in, um, they're making progress in their student housing project. They are going to have a river trail village um, with uh, that will house 528 students, some of them in dormitory style, some in apartments. It's really very nice. Um, 
a non-for-profit organization will own it and the rents will provide debt service for the bonds, but this is not, you know, a kind of bond that you vote on. And um, the, a local developer is uh, in charge. They're going to start construction in fall of 2021 with occupancy slated for fall of 2023. And um, I thought that it was very bold and it's uh, something that's good because we've all been talking about how expensive housing is. And um, they went over, they, they have something new called a welcome center with a Napa Valley College ambassador. It's online. They've got a virtual lobby and they, the entering the school and transferring out into another college, the process has been smoothed out. And they say that they are meeting and, and exceeding their goals for transfer. And they are very proud of um, some of the colleges the students have been transferring to, not to mention you know, the certificate programs. But the key is that they are meeting and exceeding their goals. So I think we should be very pleased with that. And their plans for our students, um, they, they want our students to go to the college and not just that, not just go, but um, thrive there, succeed, and they discuss the support systems, you know, they're putting together for students, because many of them are first generation college, and, it, and it's tough, it's tough to na navigate, so I, I, it was an hour and a half, and it just flew back by, I was so interested in it, and um, they're going to do it again next time, you know, they also have quite a comedy crew down there, you know, discussing our virtual, um, our virtual uh, steak and asparagus dinner, you know, filet mignon and asparagus for lunch, and maybe we'll do it in Hawaii next year. Um, right, I know it was, uh, but it, it was it was interesting. They've been very busy down there, and as most of you know, I was a teacher, and we were, we always uh, told each other when we were worn out. It's it's not a job; it's an avocation. It's if you stay in the field, it's because you like it, and um, because you like the students, you like to be able to help them. And uh, this has been the last year has been a test for all of us. And I think uh, some people in some occupations have been tested more than others, and teachers are certainly certainly in that group. Um, I too appreciate what they've done for our students. Uh, it's, it has been just unbelievable. Uh, this time a year ago, we had no idea it would continue this long, but we're coming out of it. Um, we can be happy. I am not going to focus too much on learning loss because I believe students are very resilient and very smart. And um, unlike, people my age, the brain, the brain system hasn't hardened yet, you know, and they're going to be, they're going to be fine. Um, but I want to thank all the teachers for what they did. I know how, I know it was, it was scary at times. It's so hard and you did it for our students and I'm always going to be grateful for that. So thank you so much. Trustee Chu. So on April 27th, I attended the ACMS African American Coalition, where I heard that the leadership class of Ms. Jennifer Anderson and her students, uh, Iana Lobau and Michaela Grogan, sorry if I messed up your names, um, they just started a social justice poster contest for the students, which is great. Um, so it's ongoing right now, and the participants' posters will be posted around the school, and the winners of the poster contest will have their posters um, at the school and possibly at other locations in town. So looking forward to seeing that when that comes out. Um, on April 29th, I also attended the CSBA Region 3 meeting. Thank you, Trustee Reiser, for giving a summary of that. And I also attended the um, May 4th um, CSBA expanded learning governance for developing effective learning recovery plans as Trustee Water did as well. And I'm happy to see that some of those ideas are incorporated in our summer program. So I'm looking forward to that presentation. Um, following two teachers <laughs> and appreciating teachers, um, I am very, very, very grateful for all the teachers work at our schools. 
especially for those who teach my kids. They're not, <laughs> they're not that easy sometimes. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much to all the staff as well. Um, you guys make that school run like clockwork. Um, next week is also Nurses Appreciation Week. And I know that our nurses do a great job in trying to help us manage our COVID response. Um, and uh, May is actually Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So um, American Canyon, the city, and also the Phil Am of American Canyon is organizing a, an Asian solidarity rally on Saturday the 15th at 10 to noon at Shenandoah Park in American Canyon. So um, if you have a chance to go and participate, that'd be great. Um, I will be attending a CSBA governance workshop, so I won't be able to make it, but I'm sure I will hear it because that's basically like my backyard. <laughs> um, and happy Mother's Day for the Sunday. Trustee Julie, go ahead. So um, I don't have a whole lot to report. My last two weeks have been light here, but busy in my professional life. So um, I did forget the last meeting to report. Uh, I, I met with uh, Gail Young with MVEA and uh, that was the first time I had the chance to meet with her. Uh, and we had a great discussion about um, the wonderful teachers that uh, she gets to represent as the president. Um, and you know, to, to that, I, I echo what uh, other trustees have said about teachers and um, you know the difficulties that this year is, has raised, but I also want to acknowledge the way that they, you know, teachers have gone as they do every year uh, above and beyond just the kind of minimum requirements uh, and inspiring kids to, to learn. Um, my daughter actually got to be on the, uh, the Vine on the radio last week. Uh, yeah. She was selected by her uh, ELA teacher, Ms. Knutson, um, to read or and talk about a, a, an essay that she wrote on, uh, on bias. They, uh, the prompt was on a bias that you've experienced or that has, has impacted you. And my daughter wrote about uh, bias that uh, regarding women in STEM. Uh, and, and what prompted her was um, a couple other teachers she has uh, who nominated her to attend the uh, Tech Trek camp, which is run by the American Association of University Women. And she will be attending that this summer. Uh, it's a, a week long camp where they focus on robotics and uh, other STEM disciplines. And it's designed for girls going into eighth grade. So it'll be all uh, run by women and all uh, attended by eighth grade uh, girls. And my daughter's very excited for it. Um, and it kind of led her to think about all, what, uh, what is keeping women out of STEM fields. And that's what she wrote her essay about. Uh, so I, I you know, it, it's, she's, was asked by the radio, um, the, the interviewer, what she wanted to be when she grew up, if she wanted to be in a STEM field. And she said, um, that's a big question. I don't know that I can answer right now. <laughs> but then she said, she's thinking about architecture or engineering so that she can help people reduce their carbon footprints. And so um, it was both a open-ended answer and also one that showed you know, thoughtfulness about what she wants to do. But um, it was an opportunity she had because of three of her great teachers. And I know that uh, you know, just hearing from the students of the month again, every, every meeting we hear from them, it's, uh, an incredible testament to the teachers that inspire the students in the district. So, uh, you know, it, it's personal to many of us, it's, but it's, it, it's very personal to um, all of the students that, uh, you know, come to our schools every day. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, I think I'm channeling student board rep Carla Magana by saying, you know, it's like five to six weeks till <laughs> they're done. 
our seniors. Um, and um, now we have the, the schedules for the graduations. And I know in my own home, we're super excited as our um, nephew, who's our first born here in the United States, um, is matriculating. So we're really excited for him. So we're, we're our family's just really, and, I, and they're happy that I opened up a spot for them since I would already be there. <laughs> They're like, oh, good, we have an extra ticket. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so let's um, now move forward with our board representative reports. So let's start with curriculum and student support committee. We have not yet met. Thank you. Facilities and technology committee. We have not yet met. Finance committee. No. Not yet. Um, policy committee. No. Nope. Special education committee, uh, community advisory committee. Uh, we meet next on the 17th of May. Thank you. City of American Canyon liaison representatives. We meet next Thursday. Okay. City of Napa liaison representatives. We meet next week. Next week, great. Town of Yountville liaison representatives. We have not yet met. Okay. Now we're going to go into superintendent and executive staff. Great, good evening NVUSD trustees and community. I'm grateful to be here with all of you for this board meeting where you are starting to see items that are about preparing us for the upcoming 21-22 school year, which is really exciting to think about. Before I speak about next year, I wanna let everyone know that our staff is diligently working on preparing for a smooth and seamless closure of the 2021 school year, which we all know has been unique and challenging. We're excited about our upcoming graduation plans for the class of 2021 and our launch of an outstanding summer program, which you will hear about later tonight during the meeting from the Instructional Services Division. Now about next year, I wanna to continue to let the community know that we are continuing to collaborate closely with Napa County Public Health and all the other uh, um, districts in the in the Valley as we prepare for the reopening of schools for the 21-22 school year. NVUSD's goal is to implement a full reopening of our campuses with a full five day a week schedule while also planning for a limited virtual school option. However, please know we are still awaiting further guidance from California Department of Public Health, the California Department of Education and the governor's office. And our goal is once these new revised guidances come out from these different state agencies that we will again align with what is anticipated to be new um, guidelines and parameters that will allow school districts more flexibility as we return to more normal schedules in the fall while still adhering to a revised set of safety and health, health guidelines that'll be based on the current and sort of new public health landscape that now is contingent upon, of course, a massive vaccine distribution that has been happening over the last couple of months. We are greatly encouraged by the distribution of vaccines in our own county, which now, as you probably read, includes the possibilities of our youth as young as 16 being vaccinated. We heard today from Napa County Public Health that um, there are likely uh, school-age children between the ages of 12 and 16 will be included in possibly as soon as the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Um, in tonight's report, I also just wanna take a moment to uh, thank and recognize Director Chris Gross and her team in the enrollment office. Ms. Gross and her team have been supporting families who will be impacted by our school closure and reconfiguration plans that the board took action on on April 22nd. I wanna thank them for providing personalized support to families who have been impacted by this decision as they consider their middle school options in the Napa Valley Unified School District. We'll continue to hold those transitions with a lot of care and attention. Um, lastly, I wanna thank our students, families, and staff for maintaining a positive attitude and spirit as we approach these final weeks, like President Gonzalez might have said, there's just a few more to go in the 21-22 school year. As you all know, it's been an exhausting year to say the least. And this time of year is just challenging in a normal year, but having survived this global pandemic and delivering hybrid education in advance of most school districts in the state has made these last weeks especially fatiguing. Despite the fatigue, staff, family, and most importantly, our students are continuing to work hard every day in their classrooms. I've observed this personally as I continue to conduct visits with each of our site principals, 
as we wrap up this tumultuous year across elementary, middle, and high school. Every time I complete a visit with an NVUSD principal to check in, I find myself feeling a tremendous amount of gratitude and pride. So let's keep up the great work as we approach the last day of school in approximately six weeks. And finally, as it's already been mentioned by several of the trustees, I'm sure we'll hear about it from Assistant Superintendent Dana Page in HR. Next week, we'll be formally celebrating our employees as part of School, Appreci school Employee Appreciation Week. For educators, the job is typically not an occupation, but instead we think should be referred to as an occupation. That passion for your occupation was put to the test this year and you all proved your unwavering commitment to what you do day in and day out for kids. So I wanna thank all of the NVUSD employees for everything that you do in service to our students in our community. With that, I'm gonna to toss to my assistant superintendents and we're gonna start out with Ms. Pat Andre Jennings, the assistant soup of instructional services. Um, good evening, President Gonzalez Mares, board trustees, and Dr. Massetti. I too would like to take a moment to appreciate um, our instructional staff during Teacher Appreciation Week. They have worked tirelessly this past year to provide services to our students during a pandemic. I remain constantly in awe of what they have achieved this school year. They have more than deserved the coming summer break. The instructional division has prepared two presentations for the board this evening. Later in the agenda, you will hear more details about our summer program offerings. During the second presentation, we will share the journey of our special education department as they work to provide services to our students with special needs when school, um, when school closures began in March of 2020. I look forward to sharing these uh, presentations later this evening. Um, thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Andrew Jennings. Um, if we can hear from Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Dana Page, who oversees human resources. Good evening, President gonzalez Mares, Board of Trustees and Dr. Massetti. <clears throat> Since my last board report, we've had two staff spotlights in our newsletter and added to our webpage. First was Debbie Ward, who just recently retired from NVUSD after a long career, which started in the classroom as an independence facilitator. Most recently, Debbie served as a bus driver, ensuring our students arrive safe, happy, and on time for school. For Debbie, the most rewarding part of her work throughout her long tenure in the district was the opportunity to connect and build relationships with our students. Our second spotlight was on an amazing teacher at Silverado Middle School, Ms. Molly Segui. Molly grew up here in Napa and got her first exposure to the profession of teaching through her mother, who was an education specialist at Redwood Middle School. We're so happy Molly followed in her family footsteps and is making her mark as a beloved and exceptionally talented sixth grade core teacher covering AVID, language arts, and social studies. Please read more from these very special staff members on our HR webpage. And as many trustees have already acknowledged, this week is National Teacher Appreciation Week. Next Wednesday is CTA Day of the Teacher, and the third full week of May is Classified Employees Week. So next week, May 10th through 14th, we are celebrating all NVUSD employees collectively, underscoring the teamwork we have in our district, which is at the heart of how we work and why we are so successful. We are excited to bring a week full of well wishes, recognition, and a few special surprises. We hope everyone in the cities of Napa and American Canyon and town of Yontville take time to thank any school employees they know and acknowledge and appreciate the incredible efforts our staff has made in the middle of a pandemic to continue providing education and support to our students. This includes not only the best instruction possible, both in person and online to our students, but the Herculean efforts to fix and prepare facilities, keep them clean and safe, keep technology working, pay bills and balance budgets, hire and pay employees, communicate with families, cook and feed for stu feed students, provide IEP services, manage health plans, transport students, and deliver meals around the district. I really could go on and on and on. The bottom line is every NVUSD employee worked their tails off this year. So please take a moment or two next week to show your love and appreciation to them. It would mean a lot to our NVUSD team. This concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Page. Um, 
I'd like to move next to Mr. Rob Manguala, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. Thank you, Dr. Massetti. April showers bring May flowers and the governor's May revise. The May revise provides <laughs> data information about the governor's proposed budget. The written report will come out next week, including information about funding for K-12. The analysis of the May revise will start immediately with training provided by school services and other agencies in the following weeks. Like May of 2020, we anxiously await important funding information. We anticipate that there will be a cost of living adjustment to LCFF of close to 4%, along with some unexpected increased costs. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, unemployment insurance is anticipated to go up from 0.05% to 1.23%. This 2,640% increase will have an ongoing negative impact on direct services provided to students and put additional pressure on school district budgets. We are hoping that the May revise will outline a mechanism to offset this increase in costs. We are also waiting to hear if the state will provide a funding mechanism for an online academy outside of independent study, as we know that some families are interested in distance learning for 2021-2022. <coughs> On the technology side, I'd like to welcome Mr. Joe Bassinet as our new Chief Technology Officer, uh, who has worked for the school district for over 13 years in increasingly responsible roles. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, on the board agenda tonight, you will also see an item from Securely for consideration. Securely is a software that we install on our Google panel, which pushes to all student accounts and will provide a much better level of online safety for students while on a district device, both at school and at home. There's a web filter which blocks inappropriate content along with a number of other items such as auditor which scans Google Suite with artificial intelligence to help ensure student safety and also a, a, a 24 seven human component where district uh, contacts will receive a phone call when it's been determined that a student is at risk for a variety, for a variety of online behaviors. Um, there's also a tip line where uh, um, uh, there are uh, students have the ability to leave anonymous tips when they hear of self harm, violence or bullying. Um, there's an app called Home where parents potentially have the ability to track online screen time and manage their screen time uh, while on a district device. And also Visitor, which gives us a better way of managing identities when people visit our campuses. Um, and from the enrollment department, they're working diligently to help families at both River and Harvest with their early choice options, which will close on Friday, May 14th. Some of the other activities that they're working on for this project includes phone calls to river and harvest families that began on uh, April 28th to remind them of their early choice options. And also a letter will be mailed to all harvest uh, resident addresses by May 31st um, to include notification of in-person opportunities for one-on-one -on -one meetings on the campus for individual assistance. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Manguala. And so next we have Assistant Superintendent Mike Pearson who oversees operational services. Uh, good evening, President gonzalez Morris, MBSD Board of Education Trustees, Dr. Musetti and members of the MBSD community. Thank you for the opportunity to provide each of you with an update on operational services. Tonight, my comments will focus on food service and maintenance and operations. Uh, recently, food service was awarded a Farm to Schools Innovation Grant of $63,500. Uh, the grant name is California Farm to School Innovation Grant, and it's intended to establish or expand existing farm to school programs that, one, procure California grown, minimally processed foods, and two, coordinated educational opportunities between cafeterias, classrooms, and communities. Um, NOSH is collaborating with Napa Farmers Market and Women, Infants, uh, Children to promote a community wide harvest, uh, harvest of the Month program with nutrition education materials. Education materials will also promote the Market Match Program, California's Healthy Food Incentive Program. This program matches customers federal nutrition assistance benefits like CalFresh and WIC at farmers markets and other farm to direct sites. 30% of the grant will be spent on uh, education related items at, and events at the farmer's market. For instance, NOSH will be featuring a blender bike. Uh, they'll also be doing nutrition education materials, improving the central kitchen garden and providing school sites with garden tools to assist in rehabbing gardens due to the COVID related neglect. And 60% of the grant will be spent on local food. Local uh, vendor partners will include Mindful Meats in Petaluma that are providing raw ground beef and Walker Apple Farms in, in Groton. And then finally, 10% of the grant will be applied to labor expenses with the food service department. 
On Tuesday, April 20th, it was announced that all students nationwide would receive free meals regardless of income levels through the 21-22 school year, which is great news. The Biden administration announced the extension of several COVID-19 waivers to ensure students can continue to safely receive the free meals uh, through, the, the, through the next school year. School Nutri Nutrition Associate members called, called for the waiver extensions to provide safe, equal access to healthy uh, school meals and address continued pandemic meal service challenges. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, all schools in the United States that opt in are permitted to serve and claim meals through the seamless summer option uh, program uh, through the 21-22 school year. The waiver also allows schools to, to continue receiving the higher per meal reimbursement rate offered under the summer food service program, which is again, excellent news. And then further, the USDA is issuing a nationwide waiver to allow schools to utilize specific meal pattern flexibilities. Um, this is fantastic news, as I said, financially, but it's also great news for students and families who, who may be experiencing food insecurity issues uh, during the pandemic. Uh, to give you an idea too about our meal counts uh, that we've been having and our meal counts remaining extremely strong indicating there's a huge need out in our communities. In February we served a little over uh, 90,000 breakfasts and, uh, and uh, almost 90,000 lunches. In March we, still, we, uh, we passed out over 119,000 breakfasts and over 119,000 lunches. And in April, we, uh, we served over 120,000 breakfasts and uh, a little, almost 120,000 uh, lunches. So as you can see, there's a huge need. And I know we've been talking about the, uh, the Teacher Appreciation Week and the CSEA Appreciation Week, but this week is National School Lunch Hero Week. And tomorrow, Friday, May 7th, is National School Hero, Lunch Hero Day. So if possible, please share your gratitude tomorrow to our amazing food service employees who've done an outstanding job providing nutritious meals during a very, very challenging school year. And finally, in maintenance and operations, um, I want to acknowledge Director of Maintenance and Grounds, Albert D'Souza, and Director of Operations, Corey Aguirre, who joined me recently at a Facility and Technology Committee meeting. During the meeting, we shared with the committee the organizational structure of maintenance and operations, the roles and responsibilities, and how we collaborate between the two departments, along with the MBC school sites, to ensure our school sites are operationally sound every day. I want to thank Mr. D'Souza and Ms. Aguirre for participating in the meeting and their leadership in their respective departments. And that concludes my report for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. We have another report. Mr. Pearson, do you want to continue with the uh, next on the agenda, which is the uh, facilities and bond? Is that correct? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Mercedes. Thank you very much. Um, and now I'd like to introduce uh, the Vice President for Van Pelt Construction Services, who is overseeing our bond program, Ms. Uh, Kelly Jorgensen. Kelly, if you'll take it away. Sure thing. Thank you, trustees and Dr. Massetti. Um, tonight, I will be giving a short presentation on the um, status of our American Canyon Middle School Student Commons Project. So um, under goal four, we'll be talking tonight about the design approval process, what we've been up to for temporary housing on the project, how the demolition of the existing buildings is progressing and what's next for the project. So you can see here that uh, we have some outdoor renderings of what the building is going to look like when it's complete. We are expecting DSA approval in the coming week to two weeks. In the meantime, we're working out details with renderings like these, selecting paint colors and getting ready to finalize the design with the state. Here is a little bit of a sneak peek on what uh, the inside of the building will look like. Um, the furniture is still to be determined. Again, we're picking color selection, material types, and things like that to get going with the project, but we wanted everyone to get a little idea of what it's going to look like inside the new facility. And next, temporary facilities. This has been um, a challenge, but also a success for the project. As everybody is quite aware, the middle school is a tight campus, and we did not want to waste our precious bond funds on temporary portables or things like that that would take away from the expense we could give to the project. So we got really creative and it was really a collaborative effort between the SBC staff, maintenance and operations, food services, 
our contractor and design build team, as well as the site staff. So really everybody pitched in and the pictures you're seeing here, if you haven't been there in a while, is the American Canyon Middle School Library or what was formerly the library and is now the temporary cafeteria. So we were able to relocate the library and give a good size space to our food service team so they continue their work at the campus. Now you're taking a look at the temporary facilities we set up for our library staff. And again, this took a lot of coordination with the American Canyon Middle School librarian and with the administrative staff at the campus. Um, the library is currently set up in two portables. One is considered the primary library. That's what you're looking at here. And then right next door is a portable devoted to storage so that it freed up a little bit of space in the portable for tables and chairs, desks, and some space to move around um, and we really appreciated the collaboration with the campus on this um, while it is a smaller space it's really well organized and well planned out and that's a credit to them we also prepared the site um, for a large footprint for construction. So you can see we've moved the outdoor eating areas to where our temporary cafeteria is at the library. There also will be available seating inside the temporary facility um, when students arrive back next year and in lunch service looks a little bit more like an average school year. But here you can see the fencing is going up, walkways for folks to get from one side of the campus to the other and some outdoor eating. And now we get to the fun part. Here's what we started with. And things are really starting to look like a construction site out there. So uh, we have been thrilled to uh, get started on the project and have such a good start. Um, and we are really appreciative of the patience of the students and staff at American Canyon Middle School as we completed the demolition process of their cafeteria some portables and as you can see a good chunk of their quad their shade structure all gone now and getting ready for new construction so what we can expect for the next six months or so is uh, the continued demolition work that's happening right this moment. As I mentioned, DSA approval this month to start construction on our new building. And then construction will be ongoing for the next year, but we're looking at right now six months. And in the next six months, we also will begin talking about what our summer 2022 work will look like. So we can really get out ahead of that and deliver a successful project for the students and staff at the middle school. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Great, thank you. Okay, we are now um, moving forward with our approval of consent agenda. I would like to pull item I1A. Otherwise I'll move to approve. I'll second. I have a first by Trustee Gracia and a second by Trustee Dooley. Uh, Vera, if you could do roll call, please. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jenkowitz. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Trustee Reiser. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Shu. Aye. Trustee Dooley. Aye. Great. Thank you. All right, let's go to item I1A with consultant services contracts. Yes, I had a question about the enrollment stabilization plan that Dr. Julie Halber is going to work on. I would like to hear more about this plan and what it entails. Mr. Mangual, would you like to answer that? Yes, I can. Thank you, Dr. Massetti. So in, in terms of the plan that we're looking forward to, we wanted to ensure that we had the ability um, to, to create a plan as outlined in the strategic plan in terms of looking at enrollment. And one of the things that we're trying to examine is and ensure that we look at how other people are, are, are dealing with their enrollment centers with the idea of ensuring that we have the best product possible for our school district, which is why we want to invest some time and money into this. I would add, Trustee Gracia, that um, thank you for that, Mr. Manguala. I would just add that um, you know, we, we are, if uh, you see there and do a little bit of research, um, we're looking at, at a partner that could help us who is versed in best practices in terms of enrollment stabilization and how to approach enrollment. 
Um, I think here in MVUSD, as we continue to battle declining enrollment, um, there's a lot of layers to that. We've come to realize the importance of program. We've got a history of magnet um, uh, programming in the district as well. So um, we have a, a, an open enrollment uh, policy that is extensively used by our families. So there's a degree of complexity around addressing enrollment as we continue to look at um, declining enrollment as, as a challenge that we're facing as an organization and community. And we just wanna make sure that we're working with the best in class um, to provide um, an enrollment stabilization plan that, that is outlined as one of the tactics under goal four, like Mr. Manguala said. So um, Dr. Chris Gross is who oversees the enrollment office is gonna kind of lead the work around the development of that plan with the, uh, the partner. And we look forward to bringing that back to the school board as part of our accountability um, in implementation of, of the goals and tactics that are laid out in the strategic plan. So thank you for that question. I think it's an important one given what we're facing today. Thank you, Trustee, Trustee Gross. Yeah. All right, well, with that explanation, then I think I'll move to approve. Second. That's a first by Tristy Gracia, second by Tristy Water. Uh, roll call, Vera, please. Yes, Trustee Gonzalez Mares. Aye. Trustee Jankowitz. Aye. Trustee Gracia. Aye. Trustee Reiser. Aye. Trustee Water. Aye. Trustee Shu. Aye. Trustee Dooley. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are now going on to items. Um, under J, presentations and discussion items. We'll go with J1A. This is the summer 2020 student learning opportunities presentation. Um, good evening, I'm Red. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bassinet. So good evening, um, President gonzalez Morris, Board Trustees, Dr. Massetti, and community members. Tonight, I am delighted to share information about the summer learning opportunities we have planned for students. Next slide, please. We will start with an overview of how we approached our planning for summer learning, specifically identifying the goal and purpose of the learning opportunities we developed for students. Next, the directors of Curriculum Instruction and English Learner Services, Matt Manning and Peter Hartnick, will share the offerings for elementary, middle, and high schools. Then, Arisbeth Cora the teacher on special assignment who coordinates the migrant ed program will convey the opportunities being provided to students in that program. And lastly, I will share our special education extended school year program. Next slide, please. Several months ago, we began, as we began to plan summer, um, our summer programs, we decided that it was important to um, focus on providing in-person learning opportunities to students to the greatest extent possible. We wanted to provide students with an opportunity to connect with other students and with our teaching staff. We wanted to engage students with high quality programming. We wanted to enrich their summer experience after a year of hybrid learning with hands-on um, and educational um, activities that didn't solely focus on academic standards. And lastly we, lastly, we wanted to provide additional academic support to those students in most need who may have struggled during hybrid learning. With those goals in mind, we embarked on our planning. We reached out to organizations who have provided exemplary summer programs in our community and throughout the Bay Area. We partnered with those organizations along with our stellar instructional staff to offer comprehensive programs this summer that will connect, engage, enrich, and support our students. Next slide, please. Now I will introduce Matt Manning, who will share the elementary summer learning opportunities. Uh, Mr. Manning, take it away. Thank you very much. Good evening, President gonzalez Mares, Board of Trustees, and Dr. Musetti. At the elementary level, we are providing both enrichment and academic intervention opportunities to a broad spectrum of students. We are offering program, programming during three two-week sessions running from June 21st through July 30th. We are not doing this alone. In building our summer programs, we have developed a new partnership with Adventure More, which is shortened to EDMO, and we are leveraging our existing partnerships with NCOE, Boys and Girls Club of the Napa Valley, and On the Move. EDMO is an award-winning national education nonprofit that cultivates curious, courageous, and kind humans through STEAM and social-emotional learning-based educational experiences. We have partnered with EDMO to provide both a standalone EDMO opportunity open to all K-5 
current K-5 students, and we have paired Edmo with our academic intervention classes. Registration for these programs is underway now. Notification with final registration information was sent out for our standalone Edmo program today. We sent out that notification to 1,360 uh, families, letting them know that their students have secured a space in our, in our Edmo standalone program. We also have a waiting list that we formed and we will notify families on that waiting list as we are able to accommodate them when space become, if, when and if space becomes available. We are also offering the NCOE Cool School pro Program to students at four of our elementary schools, McPherson, Phillips, Shear, and Snow. These schools have an existing partnership with Cool School, and have paired, we have paired this program up with our NVUSD academic intervention classes. Boys and Girls Club will offer on-site programming on two of our school sites, Pueblo Vista and Canyon Oaks, as a wraparound program to the NVUSD and Edmo programs occurring on those campuses in addition to the American Canyon and Napa clubhouses. On, on the Move will continue to work through the summer with a group of fourth and fifth grade leadership academy students from McPherson, Phillips and Shear to provide parent education and provide parent education through the Family Resource Center staff. On the Move will also be working with our NVUSD parent liaisons to support attendance in all of our summer programs. They will make reminder calls to parents as each summer program session approaches and follow up with families if attendance calls are needed. Next slide, please. We have worked closely with site administrators in our maintenance and operations department to spread programming across multiple elementary sites. Schools that do not have programs on site are paired with another school to ensure access to programs for all students and families from schools across NVUSD. For example, Vichy is paired with Willow so that Vichy students can attend the Willow campus for both the Edmo program and the intervention classes. Next slide, please. At the core of our summer programs are our two-week NVUSD teacher-led academic intervention sessions that we will offer to up to 1,300 students drawing from all elementary schools. We are finishing up hiring teachers for the NVUSD summer program now. Intervention classes will have 16 students per class, and we are focusing our outreach efforts primarily on rising second and third grade students, knowing how important it will be to support those learners in shoring up their math and reading foundational skills. Principals and site teams are currently registering those students. Students attending NVUSD intervention classes in the morning from 8.30 to 12 o'clock will then attend either the Edmo or Cool School program in the afternoon from 12 o'clock to three o'clock, thus providing a full day learning experience for our students most in need of academic support. Between the standalone Edmo program and the Intervention Plus Edmo pairing, we will be able to offer the Edmo experience to just over 2,000 students. The Cool School program will serve, will serve 168 students at McPherson, Phillips, and Shear, and the Boys and Girls Club programs will serve 550 students at Pueblo Vista, Canyon Oaks, and the clubhouses. Next slide, please. We are leveraging our core reading and math curriculum, Bridges and Benchmark, to focus in on the foundational skills that will be essential for success in second and third grade. We will administer a pre and post test at the start and end of each session to measure each student's growth, and we will share this information with next year's teachers. The Edmo themes incorporate STEAM and social emotional learning and include animation studio, engineering with empathy, and expressive arts. That is a look at our elementary programs. Thank you for the opportunity to present. And I would like to now introduce Director Peter Hartnick, who will talk about our secondary offerings. Thank you very much, Director Manning. Uh, good evening, uh, President gonzalez Morris, Dr. Musetti, and trustees of the Neff Valley Unified School Board. Secondary education, and if you could go to the next slide, please, uh, Mr. Bassinet. Thank you. Secondary education also has many exciting opportunities for our middle and high school students. Beginning with our high school students, there are multiple ways for students to increase their college and career readiness this summer through real world experiences. Summer internships, and a big um, thank you must be given to our work-based learning coordinator, Amber Cleveland, um, is offering two eight-week paid internships in both the, the industry of winemaking um, and also in the resort industry, two areas that are very prevalent here in Napa Valley. Um, this year, because of the pandemic, we were forced to limit spots um, based on some challenges getting partners with our um, with people here in, uh, in Napa Valley. 
Um, however, we were able to have 60 applicants for the fields of opportunity, um, and there'll be 20 spots. The, um, the, uh, the application closed yesterday for that, as well as for resorting to opportunity, where we'll have 15 spots um, and where we had 40 applicants. Um, additionally, we'll have virtual career academies. This is something uh, brought to us in partnership with Napa Learns. Um, a, a, a survey um, indicated that over 100 students would be interested in getting industry certification in things like entry-level Python programming or Facebook book blueprinting to support them in potential careers in social media or STEM fields. Uh, Napa Valley dual enrollment, because of increased partnerships um, and efficiencies this year as a result of moving to a DocuSign for the permits to attend, as well as revising guidelines for high school credits for college classes, um, students have, uh, have a tremendous opportunity to take advantage um, for advancement as well as enrichment opportunities at Napa Valley College this summer. When they are in 10th grade or 15 years or above, they're able to take these courses free of charge. Um, at this point, um, students uh, from our high schools, over 250 of them have already submitted their permit to attend for the summer um, program, which begins on the 14th of June. Uh, students uh, can also continue some of their learning from their courses they take in career uh, technical education in classes that have articulated to the college as well. Additionally, many students may need to engage in credit recovery to make up courses where they may have performed poorly um, in past years. Um, there has been a tremendous team effort from Student Services Office to support students in the opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge. And we look forward to updating you on the success of our credit recovery program in the fall. At this point, all students who are in need of credit recovery have been put into the system um, and will be prioritized based on their grade level. Um, next slide, please. There are also multiple ways for students to enrich their summer through arts and activities as well. The Snap Valley Educational Foundation has partnered with NVUSD to provide opportunities for students to return to play their instruments with their peers. At the middle school grades, the Napa Valley Honor Strings will be directed by Cody Alvis, current teacher. The Napa Valley Honor Band will be under the direction of Bill Gant and Wendy Scott. Wendy Scott is a current teacher and Bill Gant is a former teacher here in Napa Valley Unified. And at the high school grade, there will be a Napa Valley Honor Symphony. Um, Brendan Galvin, uh, current Vintage High School um, band director, and Cody Alvis will be in direction of this. This is open to students um, in the Napa Valley Unified School District, as well as other districts within the county. Um, there's also opportunities for middle school students. Um, there's summer camp options. Um, ACE, which is our partnership with the Napa County Office of Education, which stands for uh, After Class Enrichment Program, um, is partnering with us to provide full and half day camps at two of our middle school campuses, Harvest and Silverado Middle Schools. Um, this is a trusted partner who provides us with after school um, activities uh, throughout the school year. And this is an excellent addition for a two week program to support students um, to get back and see their peers in an environment where they can play and, and build those relationships, um, which were so challenging this year. As Director Manning mentioned, the Boys and Girls Clubs are offering robust programs for middle school students this year at both the Napa and the American Canyon Clubhouses. We know it's important to make sure that we offer programs in both of these communities in our, in our, in our district. Um, AIM High is also a program uh, that works with students who are in middle school uh, transitioning into high school. It's a multi-year summer enrichment program offered at no cost uh, to sixth through ninth graders across Northern California. So the idea here is that students in their fifth grade year apply to this program and continue it for their sixth, seventh and eighth grade summers um, to provide them with a really strong foundation to be success in high school and beyond. Um, NBUSD is also, uh, next slide please. NBUSD is also thrilled to partner with ID Tech pending board approval, a nationally recognized organization promoting academic engagement through computer coding. We are providing one week camps to our middle school students free of charge. For the weeks of June 21st and June 28th, there will be opportunities for students to sign up for one of four different coding languages 
in small groups of five to seven of only NVUSD students. There will be two hours of daily live instruction virtually and two hours of project work time with the ability to connect with a teacher. They will be able to make their choice in Java, JavaScript, Python, and C++ to learn the development of both apps, games, and other coding related opportunities. There's also a, a, a current development of an August summer bridge. Um, we know that we need to help transition our middle school and high school students physically, emotionally, and then academically with the goal of supporting students at all our schools in both Napa and American Canyon. There will be more information to come as these programs um, continue to be developed um, under the direction of uh, incoming uh, Director of Secondary uh, Curriculum Instruction and English Learner Services, uh, Ms. Monica Reddy, um, with my support. Um, I would now like to introduce Ms. Aras Beth Coro, K-12 Napa Valley Unified School District Migrant Ed Coordinator. Thank you, Director Hironek. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this summer, we're really excited to be offering the following services to our NVUSD migrant education families. Um, if I can have the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, our programs will run virtual, virtual distance learning this year, and um, our focus will stay on academic and social emotional cultural learning. For our K-5 program, the, um, it will run from June 21st through July 9th, three weeks. Um, the focus will stay, or the, I'm sorry, the academic curriculum for ELA and math will be aligned to our district's core program, Benchmark Bridges, along with um, GLAD strategies. We will also be incorporating PE, mindfulness, and art um, to make sure that there is engagement and, um, and motivation for our students. Um, there are a total of 280 students, K through five migrant net students, out of which 200 plus have confirmed attendance already. Next slide, please. Thank you. So before I, um, I speak about um, high school, I wanna mention that even though MigraNet is not providing a middle school summer program, once again, we continue our partnership with AIM High um, and their focus, and, um, which will be virtual this year. Um, their focus will still be on academic and social learning. We, um, and we're partnering by helping with recruitment and registration and in exchange, or students, migrant net students receive priority for enrollment. We currently have 32 students, migrant net students enrolled in this program. Now, our Adelante summer program, it uh, will be servicing nine to 12th grade students. It will run for five weeks, June 21st through July 23rd. Our focus will stay the same, academic and social emotional cultural learning. The academics focus will target MBOSD credit recovery for ELA, math, and science. Cyber High will engage our 11th and 12th graders in need of support. Navians will continue to offer college and career readiness classes. And this year, we're also partnering with Aldea to provide art therapy for students. Our goal is to have 150 students enroll out of 240 uh, current migrant net students in our district. With these services, we're expecting to serve around 380 students which is a little bit over half of the total number of um, 720 current students, migrant students in the district. Thank you very much. And I'll pass it back to Ms. Andrew Jenkins. Thank you so much, Ms. Cora. Um, next slide, please. Another completely new program is our Scholar Series. This program is uniquely designed to support rising 11th and 12th grade students that are attending credit recovery this summer. 40 students will be selected based on recommendations from high school counselors, teachers, and site administrators. Students will experience topics titled Sharing Our Stories, Caring for Mind, Body, and Soul, From Dreamer to Achiever, One Step at a Time, and From Failing to Plan, Planning to Succeed. The idea is to give students who are ex um, experiencing credit deficiency, uh, um, have some credit deficiencies, an opportunity to really look at their future and figure out how, what they need to do now to plan for life after high school. Next slide, please. In special education, the extended school year is a 19 day summer program. 
This supports the needs of students eligible for special education services. Eligibility for extended school year is determined by the student's IEP team. It focuses on the needs of the students with more significant impairments for whom a break in education will result in a regression beyond what is typical. Students who are eligible not only receive academic support focused on their established IEP goals, but also speech and language, occupational therapy, vision and behavior science, I'm sorry, behavior services. This summer's classes will be held at Snow Elementary School, Vintage High School, and the post-secondary transition classrooms located next to Valley Oak High School. I believe there were 310 invitations sent out to families and 178 students have registered to attend. Next slide, please. And that concludes our report on our summer learning opportunities for families and for students. Um, thank you. And um, if there are any questions. Go ahead, Trustee Grosser. Uh, the summer programs that we are offering are great use for some of the one-time money that the district has received and is a nice way to bridge the gap between this school year and the next one. My understanding is some of this programming, which we are offering to our students for free, historically would have cost them nearly $1,000 per week to access privately. This is a good start toward addressing some of the learning loss that has happened in our community. It appears we may have another round of one-time money coming our way, and I want to be sure that we are strategic in how we spend that money. We may need to do some board fund designations in the near future in order to facilitate the best overall outcomes for our students. I will look for those discussions in the coming weeks as we get more clarity around the restrictions on this one time influx of funding. I believe any money we can set aside for program development and improvement would be particularly impactful. Well, I agree with you, um, Trustee Gracia. You know, we should be very prudent and how we spend the money, but I'll say I am really thrilled at the opportunities we're providing for our students this summer. You know, this is really good news and I like good news. So I'd like to thank, I, I would like to thank Mr. Hartnack and um, Ms. An Andrew Jennings and uh, Mr. Manning for all your work. This is, uh, this is wonderful. This will really help our students. And I, I obviously the parents are enthusiastic. Look at those numbers. Numbers are amazing. Yeah. It's not always easy to create outreach during times like this to be able to inspire people to kind of reconnect and, and reacclimate into this process. And the numbers speak to the work that's been done, the quality of the programs being offered, and the commitment people have. So congratulations. I agree and, and just want to say it's a really impressive array of offerings that um, the staff together has, has wrangled and created and um, put together. I really appreciate the, um, the balance that I'm seeing between uh, academic intervention, but also the social emotional learning and the art therapy and the recreation time to sort of recognize the whole child. Um, and I agree with Trustee Waters' comment earlier that while, while learning loss has happened and we've lost instructional time, our kids are resilient and their brains are elastic and our teachers are brilliant and hardworking. And um, it's clear from this presentation how strategic um, your, the team's approach has been to offering uh, services for our kids. Um, my only slight concern is just that I understand the focus on the second and third grade and those foundational skills. Um, I know because those were the grades that I taught most uh, that it's that you don't want to have a have a gap that then just broadens and broadens year after year. So I understand the strategy behind that. Um, I do have sort of a question about the capacity that we might have. Um, I'm, I'm a little unclear on what the summer bridge to August might be and if that might be able to serve um, those kids that that depending on space and capacity that we didn't um, didn't get to in the academic intervention piece of it. Um, 
So th that's really, and, and then also the, the sort of academic intervention for middle schoolers. I'm wondering if I can hear a little more about, um, I know that the, I, the coding program has an academic piece to it, but will there be um, any opportunity for, you know, I know some fourth and fifth graders, but then also for the middle school kids that are identified as having academic intervention needs, um, how, how are we going to serve them if they if we don't have an academic intervention program for them for this summer? So I guess that's I'm ending on a question about the middle school learners, but I'll just reiterate one more time my um, appreciation for for just the breadth and strategy that is clearly put into this plan. Thank you, Trustee Riser. So just to clarify, you're you're cur curious about the support for the elementary students who are not in second and third grade in terms of academic intervention and the same for middle school. Was that your, your question? Yes, I, I understand the focus on second and third because of just getting in early and early intervention. Um, and in particular with the challenges that, you know, I, I think the challenges for distance learning were probably greater for the in some ways for the younger learners. So that all makes sense to me, but I just still have concern for, um, or what is, what is the district's um, kind of level of concern about the academic interventions that we might need to provide for, for the older students in that middle span? Um, Director Hardnick, you wanna to speak to that? Absolutely. <clears throat> Um, so I think uh, you mentioned it in your uh, in the initial part of your question. I think that really is going to be the intent of our August programming. We really sort of thought about in the secondary level, looking at the summertime in two distinct areas, knowing also that people need a break at some point, our own staff, that became, became very clear in our, in our surveying of, of people as we were looking for <laughs> other sorts of things. Um, and so um, looking at uh, the programs in June, really it goes through July 2nd, but we'll call it June. Um, the, those are really programs designed to enrich and engage students. You know, like after a year, like we've had, um, really to provide them that opportunity, like you mentioned, sometimes just to be able to go um, and have recreational time, sometimes to engage in a, in a, in a really exciting opportunity like coding, I and mean, sometimes to go and do something like um, engage in the symphony, which is something they haven't really been able to do um, to the extent uh, normal this school year with their peers. Um, so when you look at the, the time after July, really thinking about um, the beginning of August and maybe even the end of July, we really want to think about how we can utilize the data we have from student, um, student learning this year through grade data and any sort of our, um, our testing in order to make sure that we're designing those programs for exactly what those students mean. While at the same time, I think going back to um, making sure that we provide and do that same thing about thinking about the whole teacher and provide that time for them to have a little bit of a break so that they can come back really ready to attack those um, with some very strong structures um, that we do intend to provide um, to make sure that we have the opportunity to intervene with students who data says um, that really absolutely need it. Thanks. Thank you, Director Hartnick. And just to also just add, I know that um, one of he meant he um, Director Hartnick um, pointed out that you know students needed a break, and especially at the secondary level, um, we believed in from based on our um, uh, like focus groups with principals and uh, site admin that that students would not necessarily be particularly interested in coming back in June or July for academic intervention. And that we really need to look in, in terms of how we were going to support them in sort of a summer bridge in August um, or what we were going to provide during the school year next year. And that this was an opportunity for us to do enrichment for our um, secondary students and not necessarily attempt an ac academic intervention that, that um, may have had uh, some uh, less than enthusiastic uh, participants. Thanks. That makes a lot of sense. And I wanted to say one more thing, which is I just think it's great to the way that you've paired the um, academic with the enrichment to create full day programs for the kids. I know that the logistics for families will um, be a lot easier with a full day program. Um, and then, all, yeah, everybody's brains need a break. So thank you. <laughs>
So I want to reiterate that I'm really uh, impressed with the offerings that the summer school is um, having for our students. Um, it's a 180 <laughs> from what we've had in the past, which was almost nothing except for credit recovery. Um, I have a question. About, I know that uh, in the past there was um, like a couple of weeks in summer where you invited some of the uh, incoming kindergarteners to attend some the classes to kind of get them acclimated to attending kindergarten. Is that happening this year as well? I thought it was a great program to kind of introduce some of the kids who may not have even seen a classroom. It, maybe they didn't go to preschool. Um, I, I think it's a great bridge for our elementary. So if you can comment on that. Um, yes, I'm gonna ask uh, Director Manning to comment, but we are, there is a, a this, that program is happening this year. Um, yes, that that program our first, is called our first step program, and that program will be off continue to be offered this summer. So uh, it will be offered at a few school sites uh, throughout. One school site in American Canyon, Canyon Oaks, and then a couple of schools in in uh, Napa proper. And that program is led by Audrey Chubb. Uh, so that program will continue this year. The parent education piece that's always a part of that program will continue, but it will be virtual this year. Okay, great. Thank you. I don't have a, a lot to add. I, I too am impressed. I also like the um, focus to the extent possible on hands-on in-person uh, access that um, will be hopefully a, a, a really good bridge toward full in-person uh, instruction at the beginning of next school year. So I think it's, it's much needed for students who have had um, less of that than we would like. And, uh, and it, you know, it looks like an impressive lineup of opportunities. So thank you. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Dr. Musetti. Um, yeah, so I, I do wanna thank um, Ms. Pat Andrew Jennings and the instructional team. I think uh, when we knew the uh, learning loss dollars were coming in to mitigate you know, everything that our students have experienced through this global pandemic. I said, I want the best summer school um, that the state of California can offer. And, um, and I, I um, asked them to, you know, work really hard to meet that standard. And they have been working really, really hard uh, the last couple of months um, with a lot of uncertainty. We didn't have Full clarity on the dollars and all those kinds of things, but they, they started to lay the foundation early on. And I think um, because we were anticipating and anticipating strategically, uh, we were able to put some partnerships in place that I think are going to provide an incredible opportunity for our, our kids. I want to echo what Trustee Chu said. Um, I was really taken back by how limited the summer school options were here in NVUSD. So we're going to have to strike a balance in the future because we're setting a pretty high standard here in the summer of uh, 2021, rightfully so, given the, again, the impacts of the pandemic on kids learning. Um, but I do want to illuminate that California public schools continue to be underfunded, and this is what the funding should look like for summer school annually. And we need to remember that we, um, you as trustees, me as a superintendent can play critical advocacy roles in Sacramento. And so... I would love to see dollars coming from the state and or the federal government to provide this level of summer programming on a regular basis, not just post a pandemic. So I wanna thank the instructional team for meeting the gold standard. And we're really, really excited about seeing kids on our campuses this summer in these opportunities. We'll take lots of pictures and lots of video and make sure that the beautiful story gets told. Thank you everybody for your comments and well said. I think um, a lot of legislation should occur at this, uh, at the state level to increase our funding here. And um, we have a lot of stories to share after the pandemic or we're, we're still in it, right? <laughs> I like to think it's over, but not quite yet. Okay, um, well, thank you um, to Assistant Superintendent Andrew Jennings and Director Hardnick and Manning as well as my migrant ed coordinator, um, Coro, for joining us in this presentation, appreciate it. All right, we are now moving forward with special education services during the pandemic, um, and that's our next presentation. 
Uh, thank you very much for having us this evening. I'd like to introduce um, Executive Director of Special Education, um, um, Terry Lynn Rossetti, and she's going to share the journey of uh, special ed over this last year and a half or a little year and a little bit. And I just wanted to point out that when other SPED departments in the state of California said, we can't do that, um, our department said, Yes, we can, and you will hear about uh, the services provided by our, our amazing special education team. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Executive Director Terry Lynn Rossetti. Thank you very much. Good evening, President gonzalez Mares, trustees, and Dr. Musetti. As the Executive Director of Special Education, I can tell you that the last 14 months have been a blur. In preparing for this presentation, I took a look back at my schedule beginning with the day of the news of our shelter in place. For the special education department in Napa Valley Unified, the work of developing supports for students who are eligible for our services began on Saturday, March 14th. The laws that govern special education were not written with a pandemic in mind. Thus, we were starting from scratch. Next slide, please. In the beginning, we developed activity packets for students to continue learning while we, along with the rest of the world, tried to understand how long we would be sheltering. Special education teachers, speech and language pathologists, psychologists, vision specialists, deaf and hard of hearing specialists, occupational therapists, and adaptive PE teachers all contributed to the development of these activities. Parents were given the option of picking up the packets in person, allowing for social distancing, or for us to mail them home. In all, by March 20th, we had created over 2,000 packets of activities with specific age and disability groups in mind to be picked up in person or mailed home. And you can see the mailing that we had ready to go in our mail room. Next slide, please. As the district shifted to virtual instruction in April, so did the special education department. In addition to check-ins with students and families, specialists offered virtual sessions for all areas of service. In April, Napa Valley Unified School District engaged in a relationship with DocuSign to create templates so that IEPs could continue to be held through Zoom. We partnered with Parents Can our local advocacy agency to offer parents practice with Zoom so that they were able to fully participate in their child's IEP. Videos and parent training sessions were created to help parents understand step-by-step -step how to participate and sign IEPs. Between April and June, we held over 700 virtual IEP meetings using Zoom and DocuSign. In addition, specialized equipment was delivered to families' homes to support access. The special education department worked with our community partners and our transportation department to identify families of students with disabilities who needed lunches delivered at home. Next slide, please. Extended school year took place virtually in June and July of 2020. During this time, teachers continued to work with students and families to the maximum extent possible. In August, we developed protocols to safely assess students in person and resumed assessments for students to determine initial and continued eligibility for special education services. We started seeing students who required in-person services individually. We adopted new supplemental curriculum, IXL, Unique, Boom Cards, SLP Now, to better meet the needs of students that would transfer between in-person and virtual instruction. We delivered manipulatives and paper packets to students who required additional support or whose families could not navigate the technology. And students in our self-contained classrooms struggle with physical distancing. However, oh, I'm sorry, in this picture, you'll see that students in our self-contained classrooms who struggle with physical distancing, staff has maximized their PPE and hand washing in order to meet students where they are. 
The this photo is one of our independence facilitators working with a student in the Canyon Oaks functional skills classroom. Next slide, please. On October 5th, we opened our self-contained special day classes, TK through post-secondary, for half-day personal in-person instruction four days per week. We started with approximately 40% of eligible students attending in person. Later that month, as more students returned to classes, service providers shifted their schedules and delivery to maximize student supports. In this photo, you see bus driver Carolyn Lim on that first day. And I would love to tell you that her infectious smile only happens on that first day, but that is the joy that she brings every day to the students she brings to school. Next slide, please. In February, as the district moved to phase three, our small stable cohorts expanded their school day to be four hours and 40 minutes, four days a week, allowing the entire class to be together. More students returned in person, and as of now, we have 62% of this population attending in person. For each specialty area, this, this year has presented unique challenges and phenomenal breakthroughs. In this photo, you will see Margot Slack's first through third grade special day class at Willow Elementary. It has all but two students attending in person. For this group, rooming and Zooming has been a challenge. It has been humbling to watch the hurdles that these teachers have overcome and impressive to see how well they have done it. Next slide, please. For the special education teacher who has leaned heavily on multi-sensory learning, the virtual platform required a shift of instruction. In our mild to moderate programs, special education teachers use new strategies to implement Orton-Gillingham-based reading intervention programs via Zoom. In our functional skills programs, classroom websites were developed to pull together all resources in one place so that families could access them whenever and wherever they needed. In this photo, we have one of our newest additions to the special education department, Jeff Cheek. In addition to coaching football with high school students, Mr. Cheek teaches our severely handicapped kindergarten first and second grade students at Donaldson Way. Next slide, please. For speech language pathologists, articulation therapy continues to remain virtual as it is a real challenge to address sound production when both you and the student are wearing a mask. On the flip side, supporting a student with a language fluency need has been a challenge with virtual instruction. The question of whether or not it's the student's language that paused or the internet has been raised frequently. The SLPs integrated SLP Now to support literature into their therapy units, as well as boom cards to help collect data on asynchronous learning activities. Next slide, please. Psychologists integrated new assessment procedures into their daily routine while changing therapy practices to virtual or phone-based. Providing students emotional and behavioral supports was our focus in order to meet them where they are. For some students, this shift was beneficial. One psychologist shared a specific story of a student who minimally engaged in dialogue during in-person therapy, but found the phone sessions to be freeing. For the students in our alternative programs, those identified as being eligible for services due to emotional concerns, this connection was vital. Our social workers and psychologists made it a priority to have weekly, if not daily contact. Adaptive physical education teachers worked together to create a library of videos to support weekly instruction. They searched for items that could be found in a majority of homes to be used by virtual students so that they could continue to make progress on their goals. Our deaf and hard of hearing specialist created a Google Classroom for the students that she supports district-wide. In addition to providing the direct instruction virtually to these students, she posted general access lessons for the entire group in a place that was accessible to both the students and families. 
Virtual instruction was a particular challenge for our students who have significant visual impairments. In the beginning, our two teachers who specialize in this area, as well as our orientation and mobility specialist, focused on making sure that all of these students had the specialized equipment they needed in their homes. Much of their time was spent making sure that this technology was working for the student as well as working directly with the families so that they could understand how all of this equipment works. In addition, this team has been working on the development on hands-on activities that could be dropped off directly to students' homes. Occupational therapy is meant to be physically interactive. This required a shift as well in that the providers were not only meeting with students, but also with families to support changing the needs of the home environment. Equipment such as sit and move cushions were delivered to families, handwriting supports, fidgets, and sensory tools that can be found in the majority of homes were identified. Our behaviorists shifted to providing families with consultation to support behaviors rather than classroom teachers. In addition to working directly with the families, our supervisor of behavior services provided training during our parent university sessions. Next slide, please. And during all of this, the team at our specialized vocational services office continued to work with students to connect them with the world of work or continued education once they would leave Napa Valley Unified. Although during the pandemic, we were not able to continue our work training program, support with resume writing, soft skills training, and interview skills continued. Next slide. So this is a photo of Tammy Rogers, who teaches special education at Harvest Middle School. It really sums up the heart that our special education team has demonstrated. I am in awe of the work that this department has, has committed to over the last 14 months. We look forward to continuing with practices that we have integrated. Virtual IEP meetings have allowed for increased participation for parents as well as itinerant staff. Our new curriculum platforms have also allowed for the increase of understanding between home and school. We have connected with families in ways that we were unable to prior to this experience. On the flip side, I can tell you, we are really looking forward to having all of our students back in person as we head into August. Thank you. Thank you. Let's open up to comments. Go ahead, Trustee Russell. Yes, I had one question. I was hoping that you could explain for our audience who might not be aware what a boom card is and how it is used. A boom card is a part of a deck which has specific activities for students to engage in, and it collects data on their responses so that the speech therapist can use this to assess progress on their goals and move forward with their therapy. It's quite an undertaking and um, listening to go listening <clears throat> to you go through all that you accomplished what had to be accomplished the hurdles that I mean staff all over you know the the district but certainly um, the specificity of what you had to do um, was monumental and it sounds like you did an excellent job um, Will you change some of the existing practices um, to accommodate some of the benefits you found of technology communication with parents? Will you be able to kind of modify existing practice to be able to provide more outreach? Um, certainly um, because of uh, time allocations of families. Um, is that something that you can integrate into future communications. And then in the um, IEPs, congratulations on 700. Um, how many do we normally have? How so, many IEPs um, do you normally need to address? And if we address 700, which sounds like a, like I said, a, a monumental undertaking, um, how did we, how many were left to still um, assess and how did we accomplish that? 
Uh, so the 700 were only between the months of April and June. Uh, we, we have um, a little over 2,200 students who are eligible for special education services. Their IEP meetings must be held annually. We were holding IEP meetings before many of our neighboring districts. And that is something that I am really proud of because we continue to continue with that interaction with parents. Fortunately, our IEP management system adopted an online signature component. So we are able to continue with that. And I look forward to continuing with some virtual IEP meetings to support parents being able to participate even from their places of work and not need to take time away to come into school. Well, it's such an efficiency standard. So that's, that's great. You. Um... You've clearly done a great job. Um, thank you for all your hard work. I know that um, the students appreciate it and families as well. Thank you. We have an amazing department. I can tell you that. Mr. Chu. And um, I know you are looking forward to um, getting back when you see the students, but those like these, uh, being able to do them virtually, that is just uh, at a point that really, those are just, um, they're really the vein of special ed teachers' minds because they're just so hard to put together to get everybody to comply. So this is good. And um, really in the midst of, you know, all the, it's all, it's all a struggle, but you really made the best of it. So I want to thank you and keep uh, passing on to your team. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Water. Trustee Chu? So I want to personally thank the uh, special education department because my older son actually qualifies for special ed because through speech and also some of the social and behavioral um, services that you provide. And I was probably one of those 700 IEPs <laughs> that you, went, you, you did. And I went through the process of signing everything online and it was seamless. It was so easy. Mm -hmm. And the idea of having a virtual meeting that really made everything so much easier to schedule. <laughs> so thank you very, very much to that you are providing all of this. And I do know that you know, our district was well ahead of other districts that I've heard about with special education. Some of those districts still don't have it much in place. And I think that's, you know, it's really, you know, sad for our students if we didn't. So I'm really happy that our, our district is you know, serving our kids well in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Chu. Trustee Dooley? I, uh, yes, I very much appreciate the, the presentation. I think the, uh, it, it's, it's hard to really comprehend all of the kind of different aspects of the, the department, the different ways that the department is meeting a, a wide variety of needs and this was very helpful to, to kind of put it all in one place and, and celebrate it in, in a, a very challenging time. Um, this is a very heavily regulated, among heavily regulated uh, uh, areas that, you know, education, special education is, is really difficult to, to kind of manage. And in a time when people are kind of you know, especially at the beginning, kind of stripping down and, and just bracing for what, what for the unknown. Um, it's really incredible to see the effectiveness of the department uh, in, in meeting needs of, of students who in, in a lot of ways could have been, uh, been over, overlooked. Um, I do, you know, I, I, I do kind of wonder how, you know, how the assessment of, of students who aren't, haven't previously been kind of qualified for special ed, how that was done in the context of, of virtual learning when there may not have been, um, you know, even cameras when they were in class or, or how, how is that uh, how is that approached? I, I know it was, was partially addressed here. So it just, it seems like there's, there was more of an opportunity for people to, or students to be under the radar uh, with, with particular um, 
special needs they may have had. When we came to assessing our students who um, who had been put forth needing assessment, we actually brought them in to be assessed in person. We didn't complete any of our assessments virtually. Um, and we did allow referrals did come in from parents as well as from teachers during this time. So we haven't slowed down on our referrals. That I, get, I think that was more my question is on the, the, the referrals, not the people who had been identified as uh, needing further assessment, but those who um, may not have been previously identified. And, and so it was kind of reliant still on, on referrals that, that may have been more difficult um, in, in the virtual setting. I, I don't, I, I think that we were still receiving, if not the same number of referrals as when we were in person, maybe even more this past year. Excellent, okay. Um, no, and, and that's, that's, that's good to hear, I think, because, you know, I'm, I, it's hard to know cause and effect of, of that kind of stuff, but no, I, I, I I'm just mostly it's a curiosity. I just want to make sure that that we um, are, are not letting students fall through the cracks. And and from this presentation, it it it's pretty clear that we've been you know setting a really high standard for for serving uh, our students. So thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Trustee Rice. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to echo my thanks um, to the team. It, it was really illuminating for me um, to just, the presentation sort of caused us all to have to consider if we hadn't already, just what an incredible broad array of challenges faced your department um, and your staff. And um, teachers are creative problem solvers and very adaptive. Um, I just loved the examples like figuring out what everybody would probably have in their house that would work as a fidget, <laughs> and that kind of thing. What, what does everybody have that we could go get and use for continuing um, you know, virtual, virtual exercising and practicing of skills? So it just... Um, your presentation just highlights that creativity and commitment and adaptability um, and problem solving. And uh, I thank you because, because of all of those uh, qualities and commitment and hard work, um, our students really benefited. And it's clear that uh, you, you showed up and, and what, what did you start out with the, the thing of they said, oh, well, you, it's too soon to open, we can't do it. And I felt like the next sentence out of your mouth was gonna be, oh yeah, watch us. So <laughs> it was really um, great, to, great to hear that um, sort of portrayed for us here. Um, and thank you so much for your stellar work. Thank you. Absolutely echoing the um, remarks, um, the word that comes to mind is just accessibility. So thank you for being creative and, 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 um, and creating those access points for, for our students. And, um, and I love that last picture. What a great way to end the slide um, with the I love you and um, just lots of love and care. Absolutely. So thank you. Seeing that there are no, um, no further comments from the board, I do want to open up. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Mason. No, just one thing before we move on. I want to thank Trustee Dooley because this was his request as a future agenda item. And I was grateful that it provided um, our director, Terry Lynn Rossetti, the opportunity to present the high quality work that they did. And also, I just want to illuminate that um, we know that we were one of the first districts to open up K-12, um, but our special education team, uh, like um, Ms. Rossetti shared, they were here even in advance of that. And many, many school districts in California just got their special education kids back with everybody else. Um, that was the trend mostly um, in April, at least, at least in Northern California in the extended Bay Area. So I just, I wanna commend them for getting them, our students that have you know, the, the most challenges um, and who needed that in-person support in, way in advance of the rest of the state. So thanks for asking for this item.
Agreed. Um, I do want to ask um, if we have any public comment, um, Mr. Bassinet. There is no public comment for these uh, agenda item, President Gonzalez Maris. Great, thank you, Mr. Bassinet. Uh, that being said, we are going to now pause and take a break um, and return in approximately five minutes, give it or take. Thank you.
All right, thank you everybody uh, for letting us pause and stretch our legs a bit. Um, now we're gonna continue with item J1C. This is introduction of basic and supplementary instructional material adoptions for high schools. Comment, uh, go ahead, Trustee Gracia. So I struggle to have confidence in the report produced for the board when the criteria used to evaluate materials are based on the best someone has ever seen. If you only look at a single book, then the book is simultaneously both the best and the worst that you have ever seen. <laughs> also, when every request submitted to the board has the highest rating in every single category, I have severe doubts about the rigor of the evaluation being done. I feel like we have lots of room to grow in our process for curriculum approval. In the short term, I would like more robust reporting on the need we are answering with the proposed course offering, along with more information on the process this recommendation took in getting to the board. This will be an important stopgap as we move toward a longer term improved curriculum approval process. I'm urging the district to begin working on improving the curriculum approval process. With regard to tonight's vote, when we get there in the action items, I will need more information before I can properly vote on this matter. I have three questions. One, why are these classes being brought before the board for approval? You want that answered now, right? Yeah, now is good. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, trustee, for your question. Um, the course materials, instructional materials, the courses and instructional materials that are be pre being presented tonight for approval are part of the CTA, CTE program that is coordinated by Napa County Office of Education. These courses are now articulated with courses at Napa Valley College, which means that students will be able to earn both high school credit and uh, Napa Valley College credit for the same course. They will need to take a qualifying exam at the conclusion of the course in order to, to earn the credit from Napa Valley College. Um, uh, the instructional materials that are a component of, of these courses are up for approval tonight are the textbooks used for these college courses and are necessary for them to be considered articulated courses. And who asked for these classes and where will they be taught next year if approved? So the teachers who are, um, uh, I think in later, it's in the board agenda tonight, the CCAP agreement, you'll see that some of the courses are listed in that agreement. And they, uh, some of the courses are taught at, Nap I mean, at American Canyon High School. And uh, I, I'm trying to remember the other business course um, um, is taught, I think, at um, New Technology High School. Okay. And how were and they're the ones who put forward the course and they're based on, um, like I said, the articulated courses with Napa Valley College. And these are the textbooks that are used for um, uh, those courses at the college. Okay. And how were the books chosen then? Um, the books are selected uh, by the, at, at the Napa Valley College uh, courses. They're the uh, materials that are used for those courses. And so then the teachers who are teaching those classes in our NVUSD uh, classrooms um, are the ones who put forward the books to the curriculum council. And I know the curriculum council has been sort of this mystery and um, typically the cur curriculum, the materials are presented to the curriculum council. Um, the curriculum council meets monthly. It consists of the assistant principals uh, from each of the high schools. It serves as the vetting um, venue um, for high school instructional materials that are not typically, and they are typically presented by the school, school departments or individual teachers. Um, materials are presented for review to the council to ensure that they are grade and age appropriate. Each assistant principal reviews the request with the appropriate department at their site. So if an American Canyon High School teacher is requesting a uh, particular instructional material, 
Um, let's say it's for social studies or English, then that material is presented to the curriculum council. Those assistant principals then talk with uh, their respective English or social studies or CTE department to ensure that that material is appropriate and they agree to the selection of this particular material. Um, after that is completed, the assistant principal indicates that approval by signing the document that is attached to the agenda item tonight. Um, and this process is separate and unique from the process it used to select core um, subject materials. So these are for typically for uh, sometimes for supplementary text, but in this case, it's the text for the course that are articulated with the college. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. You addressed my questions. You addressed my questions. So thank you. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Trustee Chu. So I I understand that the books are um, from the Napa Valley College courses, and that's why it was taken. But I have a little bit of a concern on habitudes, the art of self-leadership, because it was copyright dated 2010. Seems a little bit dated to me um, when you talk about teaching leadership to students. And since then, we've, um, you know, I, I think the idea of equity has become more of something that I think is, is needed, especially when you teach leadership. So is any of the newer ideas about leadership going to be incorporated into the curriculum? And are we even allowed to do that given that it's a, a Napa Valley College class that we're kind of modeling? Uh, the, the teacher can use additional supplementary materials. Um, this might be the core text, and I do understand, like, because it was a it was a copyrighted in, in um, 2010, um, but there hasn't been a newer version that's been produced. And um, in the evaluation and research of this particular book, um, it is actually used in quite a few colleges around the country um, as a premier text for first year college students um, around looking at leadership in particular and entrepreneurship. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? They were talking about these courses uh, today at the luncheon. And um, I was, I'm just looking at the book about business practices and they have, uh, they have writing assignments. Um, they have uh, questions relating the chapter to the student's personal experience. Lots of questions about ethics. And um, it and uh, one of the reasons they're offering the course is because there are a lot of students who are interested in starting their own businesses. You know, they're looking around and seeing um, people, um, you know, getting rich with uh, you know a certain kind of coffee or um, baked goods. Baked goods seem to be huge in in the Napa Valley, everywhere in all the urban areas. You know, they're interested in that sort of thing. So that's that's one reason. And I'm thinking, you know, this book looks like you can lose the role of management, leading, guiding, and motivating others. I mean, there's there's um, there there is some of your leadership right there. And um, using teams to enhance motivation and performance, that's kind of what we do now. So I don't know. I think that um, this this book seems to be, you know, quite quite with it. And um, they even ask students to um, look and see, go to a website and see what resources are available in the Napa Sonoma area to help them out. So um, it, it's quite interesting. And uh, you learn a lot of economics in this. Well, it allows segue to college or career readiness. Yeah. What it, it, it provides an aptitude for things that they may not, that some children may not have access to. And same with the um, entrepreneur um, kind of ideology that, that you can start a business, you can explore, which supports our, you know, thesis of critical thinking and solving problem solving, right. problem solving, and and everything else. So I think it's a nice addition. Yep. Yep. Um, I think so too. And that all there also this is showing that you know you do need skills. It's more complex than becoming an internet a member of an internationally famous family that starts with a K and putting your name on some makeup that somebody else inv uh, invented and then becoming a billionaire. There's more to it than that. Okay. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready to uh, move forward on this. Okay, 
this item is only an introduction, mm -hmm. um, but good discussion on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, just for this item, uh, Mr. Bassinet, do I have any public comment? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Great. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. Okay. We're now moving on to items K of our agenda. Uh, we'll start with our K1A adoption of revised Napa Valley Unified School District Governance Handbook. So moved. Second. The first by Trustee Gracias, second by Trustee Dooley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Fantastic. I do want to thank um, our new trustees, Trustee Chu and Riser, who did the uh, revision or the review post our governance workshop. So thanks for taking time during a very busy time to do that task. Thank you. Item K1B, adoption of California School Board Association's recommended December 2020 policy updates. So moved. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Jankowicz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, motion passes. Thank you. Do I have um, any public comment on this item, Mr. Bassinet? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. Okay, item K2A, purchase of security safety cloud plus 24 bundles software from Howard Technology Solutions. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Mr. Bassinet, do I have any public comment on this item? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great. Motion passes. We're now on to item K3A. This is a resolution 21-25, reduction of discontinuance of particular kinds of services. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Um, any public comment on this item, Mr. Bassinet? Um, I th think we do have a public comment. It looks like Gail Young has her hand raised. Hi, um, I just wanted to say that it's, it's a really difficult thing as this resolution is being passed uh, for our teachers. Um, and knowing that, that we, are, we are having, during this, during this time that's so difficult, we're losing 16 teachers. They're our youngest, they're our, they're our most new teachers that have come on. And it, it's, it's such a sad time. And I think that as we, as we go through and we look at that resolution, that we should read that resolution and make sure that people will understand that it's not, just, it's not just a piece of paper and a resolution, but there are people, young people's lives that are being affected with them not being able to have um, what they need, a job. Um, so just, just to keep that in mind as we go forward, I understand the reasonings and the financial and the, and the ability that maybe down the line they can be hired back, but it's hard to have them go. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Young. Um, She's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Any other public comment, uh, Mr. Bassinet? There's no other public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bastonet. Um, I know with difficulty, we do have a first and a second, um, and this is a resolution. Uh, Ms. Beer, if you could do roll call. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez Matas? Aye. Trustee Jankowitz? Aye. Trustee Gracia? Aye. Trustee Reiser? Aye. Trustee Water? Aye. Trustee Hsu? Aye. Trustee Dooley? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Okay, um, we now go on, on to our instructional services. Um, item key for a project LIT community program. So I'll move to approve, but I want some discussion before we vote. Okay, we have a first by Trustee Gracia. I will second to allow for discussion. Great, thank you, Trustee Dooling. 
Uh, so I just wanted to say I'm encouraged to see us getting novels into the hands of our students in whatever fashion we can accomplish that task. To use the terminology of the lit program, I do feel in the USD is a bit of a book desert at elementary and middle school. While this program isn't as good as having books as part of the core curriculum at elementary and middle school, it is a way to get some novels into the hands of some students, which is always a good thing. Go ahead, Trustee Chu. Well, I just got a, a note from um, Troy Knox uh, in reference to a gift certificate and told me what books he bought for the students at McPherson and, um, and how they have a book, how they buy the Caldecott winners and they have a book club and they share the books out and the kids vote on it. So um, I think that that's very creative and fun and communal and everything. And um, yes, I wanna go back to the old days. I, I look back and feel, think that I must've been a sadist. I mean, I'd, I'd have some, some years the kids would read 10 books in the class. And, um, but I'm, I'm excited that, um, this is this was start is starting at Napa High, right? Did um yeah she um, yes yes yeah, that's the principal correct. um yes. ready uh, brought it and I'm I'm really happy that my old school is um, kind of spearheading this so this is great. I think this is a great conversation opener. Great conversation opener with community partners. I think this is a way to integrate with um, all of our schools continuity with on our within all of our schools, but I also think it's an opportunity to, um, to create a community conversation about something that we're doing that's positive for children that can, um, that can involve our greater community. Um, there's just a lot of potential partners and a lot of possibilities. I look forward to exploring that. I wanna speak up for our library services. I'm not sure we're a book desert. We have a lot of people as you know, Trustee Water said who uh, contribute a lot to the um, empowerment, to use the term for Project Lit. I think this is a great idea. Um, I think this is a, a piece of a larger puzzle of uh, reading and, and learning to love literature that um, our district is engaged in. So I also want to uh, say that I'm very much pro books for all our students. And um, I don't know if you guys were aware, but ACMS is a uh, sixth, sixth grader this year. Uh, two of them um, created a Libris book club. It's a virtual book club. And ACMS has always been a proponent of student-led clubs. And I'm very happy to see that, you know, maybe they can also expand their program, um, not just to sixth graders, but to the rest of the school through a program like this, or maybe integrate it somehow. I know they've been, um, you know, doing great work in, in trying to have kids um, be in this club and, and trying to get more kids to be reading. So I'm hoping that this really can do great things for all of our schools. I just wanna to add too that I find this, um, this pilot program so exciting. And um, it, it sort of builds, I think, on the author series that uh, Ms. Andrew Jennings brought to us and, and built this year. Um, and, and just, I agree with Trustee Gracia that we need to have um, more actual book reading connected to our curriculum. And I think we, the pendulum swung to sort of like fragmented passage study and, uh, that's the downside of uh, close reading. But uh, it's just exciting to think about giving our kids opportunities to read for pleasure. And that's what this is to me, the idea of being excited about choosing books and reading them with your friends and talking about them. And um, you know, we as a country have a pretty high rate of a-literacy, which is people that are literate but choose not to read. And so programs like this, um, in particular with its focus on, on representation, um, where choosing books where kids are seeing themselves represented uh, is, is just a, a really powerful way to, uh, to 
bring students along to, uh, you know, to enjoy a lifetime of reading for pleasure because it's a it's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful thing to do with your time and a book can take you anywhere to any time and any place and real or imagined and um, anything that we can do to encourage that with our students um, is wonderful and I want to thank uh, Ms. Reddy and if she had staff members also on board at Napa High to get this started. Um, just thank you for doing that. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I'd just like to take the opportunity with the focus and using project, the project lit item um, to just uh, let the board know that right now the team is examining, of course, as the one time money comes in. Um, and again, in response to the learning loss uh, provoked by the pandemic, we are trying to see um, how we can utilize our libraries, um, again, building on this focus that I think the board appreciates around building cultures of literacy at our schools, looking at how the one-time money um, can be used to expand our library hours, because I think a big area of growth in NVOSD is, again, when I came on as superintendent, I was a little taken back on the limitations of the operating hours that we have for our school library. So if we're gonna be a school district that promotes uh, literacy, you know, you'll start to see it through items like these, but if we're, if we're gonna get serious about it, we really need to take a look at our library programming and how we ensure that our libraries become hubs of literacy and hubs of learning um, consistently across the system. So we're looking to use the one-time money to kind of pilot what an expansion of that would look like with a long-term goal of really figuring out, you know, how we can sustain that. Yeah, very exciting. Um, you know, lifelong learners, right? To this day, we all participate in our own ways, book clubs, right? It's just, it keeps on going. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Okay, um, so this is um, Project Lit and um, we need a recommendation, but before doing that, um, I know we had a first and a second. Um, Mr. Bassinet, do I have any public comment on this item? There is no public comment for this agenda okay. item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. That being said, uh, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? All right, Regent passes, thank you. So agreement with ID Tech. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Any public comment, Mr. Bassanet? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassanet. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, motion passes, thank you. MOU between NVUSD and Aldea Children and Family Services. So moved. Wholeheartedly seconded. <laughs> uh, first by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Um, any uh, public comment on this item, uh, Mr. Bassanet? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassanet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody abstain or opposed? Great. Thank you. Okay. Adoption of new high school course of study recommendations for career technical education. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Any public comment on this item, Mr. Bassanet? There is no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassanet. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, thank you. MOU between Boys and Girls Club and of Napa Valley and Napa Valley Unified School District for summer programming. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Any public comment on this item, Mr. Bassanet? There's no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Great, thank you, Mr. Bassanet. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, motion passes, thank you. Okay, now MOU between Napa County Office of Education and NVUSD. So moved. Second. All right, first by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooley. Any public comment on this item? 
There is no public comment for this agenda item. President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody abstain or oppose? Great. Thank you. Now under operational services, MOU between NBUSD, Food Service and AgLink Inc. for the supply of US grown produce. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Water. Any public comment on this item? There is no public comment for this agenda item. President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Okay, thank you. Item K6A, um, regards to SPC number 19.14-20, request for special inspections services for the American Canyon Middle School student commons. So moved. I'll second. First by Tristy Gracia, second by Tristy Chu. Do I have public comment on this item, Mr. Bassinet? There is no public comment for this agenda item. President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, thank you. Now item uh, K6B, which is SPC number 18.31-20, request for special inspection services for the campus modernization of Donaldson Way, elementary school, Sobrado Middle School, Napa High School, be awarded the Consolidated Engineering Laboratories. So moved. Second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Dooling. Do I have public comment, Mr. Bassinet? There is no public comment for this agenda item. President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, motion passes, thank you. Item SPC number 18.33-20, request for inspector of record services at Donaldson Way campus modernization. So moved. I'll second. Okay, first by Trustee Gracias, second by Trustee Chu. Public comment on this item, Mr. Bassinet? There's no public comment for this agenda item. President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, thank you. Okay, um, item K6D, SPC number 18.32-20, uh, request for inspector of record services at Alta Heights campus modernization. So moved. I'll second. First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Chu. Public comment on this item, Mr. Bassinet? There's no public comment for this agenda item, President Gonzalez Matas. Thank you so much, Mr. Bassinet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain? Great, thank you. Okay, we're now under informational. We'll start with um, business Items under this section do not require board action. So we will now go into business services. This is the inter-district agreement. I just, I just think it's interesting that we have uh, 244 students transferring in and only 12 transferring out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Data tells the story. Yep. Trustee Water, agree. Um, okay. All right. Um, item next item. This is the March, um, 2021 investment report. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, additional suggestions and comments from board members and superintendent. Future agenda items. So it's been some time since we've heard from the math task force, I think I would like to hear an update on their progress. You love the math task force. We did a great job last time, that session. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, send the same teachers. <laughs> Just teasing. I'm sure we've got a lot of them that give good presentations. Okay, thank you. All right, last item. Move to adjourn. A second. <laughs> oh, can someone second, please? I can second, actually. <laughs> First by Trustee Gracia, second by Trustee Chu. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstain that? Great. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>